shalom to all of you. Shalom to you, brothers and sisters that are here, and also shalom to the brothers and sisters that are following along online. Uh, welcome again. And uh, we've been, I guess we've been out of, somewhat out of commission for a while, because we've been, well, I particularly have been running around. Uh, you might have seen me in Atlanta a lot, so I've been down there pretty much on business in terms of IUIC. So although you all have seen me there, my, my Part of the uh, reason uh, while I was there was because there's a lot of things going on internally and, and administratively uh, that we have to continue to uh, upgrade because the body continues to grow as per the scriptures. So uh, a lot has been asked upon us in leadership to uh, come together. That's why at times you've seen uh, deacons uh, from all over to come down into the, uh, into the Atlanta and work out some of these things because as the body grows, the needs of the body grow. We need to be organized to make sure that we can handle the uh, the influx of the brothers and sisters that are sure to be repenting, and we've seen that. So we've been on a mission. So I'll just uh, leave it at there because the work continues. Um, today's topic is not really a long thing, and it's not really anything that's really deep, but um, the title of it is The Bible in These Last Days. The Bible in These Last Days. Hmm. The Bible is our history book. It is our constitution. It is our guidelines. Let's get that. Give me that in Peter's, in Peter. I got, I took, got a little bit of notes here, but I'm sure I'm going to be going all over the place because I have a thought in my mind in terms of how I want to bring this information out. For instruction, that one, that's what I'm looking for. Who's reading? I am, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. You know what I want? Two or 16. Yes, let me hear it. 360. 2 Timothy. Yeah. The Bible. The Bible is our book. It is our guideline. It is our constitution. And I know a lot of our people out here in the world, we're going to talk a little bit about that. A lot of our people out here in the world are uh, trying to celebrate something that has absolutely nothing to do with them. This 4th of July. The 4th of Eulies, I'll call it that, because that's what it really is. Uh, and, you know, during the, like I said, a lot has been going on uh, over the months. You've had uh, G George Floyd, who was murdered in Minneapolis, Minnesota, by the police officer, uh, Derek Chauvin, with the knee on the neck. And when that happened, the man pleading for his life was killed, murdered, and um, and black people erupted. And as black people erupted, you've had other agendas. It's terribly that it's terrible that the agenda which uh, sought to use that opportunity was named Black Lives Matter. And in reality, it wasn't about black lives at all. How many of you, uh, uh, over the last four Fridays, uh, myself, the, uh, the captains in the Carolinas, uh, we were going over a series on the, uh, on the radio show that we have on Fridays, the Bible Book of Our Fathers, bringing up the fact that does black lives really matter, meaning matter to this group. And a lot of people may be dismayed about that title, but you have to look at the reality of it, okay? Black lives, the lives of black people, do it really matter? And you look at that and you ask yourself, okay, well, let me, let me look past the headlines. Let me look beyond the name and let's see is this movement that has, came, that has come out of this situation where the man was killed 
then that movement latched on to that. And then they said, well, it's Black Lives Matter. So let's see, did black lives, do black lives really matter? Or is there, or was there another agenda behind the scenes? Because if black lives matter, black lives matter regardless of who takes it. Y'all understand what I'm saying? If we're selling dope to each other, black lives don't matter. If we are aborting our babies, black lives don't matter. If we're shooting each other down, black lives don't matter. And if there's an advocacy group that's supposed to come and bring some sense to a destroyed people to say, listen, we're advocating for black lives, and then if I look inside the community and see that we are doing everything that is, op that is opposite to black lives, as a group, I would say something about it, would I not? I would go to the brothers, I would go to the sisters, I would go to the community where it's apparent all over the planet Earth how we are doing each other, and I would say, listen, these are the issues that we need to deal with first in order for it to truly be a movement of black lives. Abortion hasn't been dealt with. Black on black crime have not been dealt with. Murdering of each other, gang violence, none of those things have really been dealt with in that movement. But what in fact has been dealt with? LGBTQ and the rest of the alphabet. That's what has been taking place. But we, because our, our uh, indicator as black people have been used as a label, we thought that it was about us. We thought that it was about us, and they used that label as a skateboard to get it to the Supreme Court and change laws for us to stop doing the things that we're doing? No. To stop us from murdering each other? No. To stop us from selling dope to each other? No. To stop us from aborting our babies? No. But what did they pass? LGBT, more rights, more this, more that. And the moment that happened, commercials have went wild. All kinds of commercials are now, every time you turn on your YouTube or whatever, this pro I don't really watch TV, but I imagine many of the commercials are coming out there now talking about gay this, gay that. LGBT, acceptance, all that kind of stuff is out there now, but nobody has said anything about the real plight of what's going on with us. Can I get a witness? All praises. Now, hence the Bible has entered the picture. So the Bible gives us our glasses, gives us the ability to see the reality of what's going on. Years ago, me and Deacon Asaph used to work together uh, uh, many uh, years ago in the hospital. And we used to have a little, we used to hold classes, you know, study in the hospital. And one of the things that I would talk about was I used to use the words corrective lenses when it comes to the Bible. I said the Bible is our corrective lenses. Y'all understand what I mean by that? Our glasses. The purpose of eyeglasses and corrective lenses is to correct the vision so that you can actually see what's in front of you or you can see what is in your vision. If you don't have corrective lenses, the things that you see may not be exactly what they are. The Bible is our corrective lenses to tell us exactly what we see. And because everybody else that is outside the Bible they think they have 2020 vision when you actually show them that, listen, this is the vision that the scriptures is talking about, and this is what's really going down. They're thinking that you are blind. They think they have 2020 vision. You know, there's a saying that goes, you can tell when the people are sick, when they no longer recognize the disease. As long as they think they're okay, you can't tell them anything. But you have the medical chart on the people, which is the Bible. You can see where your people are messed up. Give me Deuteronomy 28. 28. Here's an example. 
only only the proper doctors, meaning us, the enlightened ones, know the medical history of the people. We know how our people are supposed to act, how they're supposed to dress, what they're supposed to eat, what they're not supposed to eat. We know who their enemies are. We know all of that stuff because we have the chart to the nation of Israel, the medical chart, so to speak. We know that. But if the patients, which are the people, don't understand that, they'll think that they're whole. And that's why they're looking at you. You, you got the medicine, and they're looking at you like, what are you coming to me for? I'm good. Let's read. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 28. The Lord shall smite thee with madness. The Lord shall smite the Israelites with madness, with craziness, meaning they're out of their mind. That's what it's talking about. When they say a person is mad, that means that they are beside themselves. Can I get a witness? Who's in here is new? Let me see your hands, because I understand there's some new people. Hands up high. I ain't going to turn the cameras on you. One, two, okay, a few brothers, all right? All right, I'm going to come back to y'all in a, in a few moments. So read that again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 28. The Lord shall smite thee with madness. The Lord shall smite the Israelites. That's a curse that came upon the children of Israel for disobedience. So as we disobeyed God's laws, there was consequences that came upon the children of Israel. And those consequences are written in the medical chart of the nation of Israel, the Bible. So as we become enlightened, we get, the, we get to see what's actually happened. I'm going to show you, I'm gonna show you even further that go along with that statement. Go to Isaiah 29 and 9. Because we are the, uh, the doctors, so to speak, the enlightened ones. We have the medicine. We have the solution to cure our people's problems. And then when we look out and we see the problems of our people, it is through the application of the medicine in the Bible that is the cure. So this is where we are right now, those of us that are enlightened in this Bible. Isaiah 29, verse 9. Watch this. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 29, verse 9. Stay yourselves and wonder. Stay yourselves and wonder. This is a message to those that know. It's talking to us, and it's telling us to stay ourselves in our Bible. Irregardless of what's going on around the world and in this uh, country, in this society, our objective and our direction is to stay in the Bible. Give me Isaiah 33 and 6. We're coming back here. Isaiah 33 and 6. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 33, verse 6. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy time. That's the staying right there. And wisdom and knowledge of the Bible shall be the stability that shall stable us in what? Of thy times. In our times. In our troubled times. Was there more on that? And strength of salvation, the fear of the Lord is his treasure. You hear that? This, it says, and strength of the Lord. Read the whole thing again. The book of Isaiah chapter 33 verse 6. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy time. And wisdom and knowledge written in the Bible shall be the stabilizing agent, shall be the stability of our tumultuous times, meaning in these last days. The Bible in these last days. The stability will come as we stay in the Bible. Read it again. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy time. And wisdom and knowledge of the Bible shall be the stabilizing, shall be the stability of our times. Go ahead. And strength of salvation. And it shall also be the strength of our salvation because we're looking for salvation. Because we know that we are the people of the Most High and we know that we need salvation. Go ahead. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. So as we fear the Lord, this is what keeps us stabilized. A lot of people ask different ones of us. They say, well, how is it that you maintain and stay in this Bible so long? 
How is it you stay in this truth for so long? How is it that you don't get faint-hearted and this and that and the other? Some people ask those questions. And the thing is, it's not that we don't get challenged. The challenges come to all of us. The temptations come to all of us. But what keeps, what keeps us to come back to this is that last part there. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. That's what does it. Y'all understand that? You have to be, you, in order for you to respect the Bible, you have to be afraid of the judgment. Whenever you lose respect and you lose fear for something, then you won't count it seriously. You begin to play games and start shucking and jiving. But if you know that there's a judgment behind it, you know that you're going to stick with what it says. Y'all all right? Go back to where I was at in Isaiah. Isaiah 29. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 29, verse 9. Stay yourselves and wonder. So stabilize yourselves, those of us that know. Stabilize ourselves and wonder. Stabilize ourselves. And it says what? And wonder, right? Read it again. Stay yourselves. So that's the first part. Stabilize yourselves in the scriptures. Then do what? And wonder. And wonder. We wonder when we know what the Bible says, we know what the medical chart says, then we wonder because we look out and we see the people and we see the condition of madness. We see the condition of craziness. That's what we see. We see Deuteronomy 28, 28, so you can understand. We see that. But the people that are in those conditions, they don't see nothing wrong with it because they have not, they don't have the stability that you and I have. Y'all all right? Read it again. Stay yourselves and wonder. Stay yourselves in the Bible and wonder. Look at the condition of the people. They're drunk. They're mad and crazy. Go back to uh, Deuteronomy 28, 28 again. We're coming back to Isaiah. It's the book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 28, verse 28. The Lord shall smite thee with madness. The Lord shall smite the Israelites with madness, meaning out of their mind. You walk up on some people, and if you've known them before, and you've known them to be what you might call normal, then you catch them a week later or a month later, and they're totally something different, you say these people are mad. They done lost their mind. That's the madness that the Mosai is talking about. Our people were made to be the Israelites, but we have gone astray from Israel. So the Mosai said that we are crazy. We've lost our mind. And the only people that can recognize that got to be the ones that know where the people are supposed to be as opposed to where they are currently. So once you know where the people are supposed to be, and then you look at the people and you see they're operating outside of the guidelines that was given to, for the people and to the people, then you know that they are mad. You know they are crazy. Read it again. The Lord shall smite thee with madness. Because of our disobedience, the Most High caused us to discontinue from our heritage, and we've lost everything. We've lost our mind. We've lost our language. We've lost our culture. We lost our name. We lost it all. And we think we're normal as a, as a result of losing all of these things. You know the people are drunk. Read. And blindness. And blindness. So the most I say will smite us with craziness and blindness. The blindness meaning that they can open up the Bible because they've done that in church. They in church hooping and hollering, cutting back flips and doing all of that in the church. They got the Bible in there. How is it that they come out just as bad as they were when they went in, or perhaps even worse, because they are blind. They cannot see what's plain in the Bible. When we go out to the camp, particularly the fly missions, I want to talk about that in this class. I want you all to understand the importance of fly mission. I ain't necessarily even talking about camp per se. I ain't even getting to the camp yet. I'm going to talk about the importance of flyer missions. When you go out, on the, when you go out with the flyers, and you showing them and you explaining different things in the Bible. And they were like, well, wait a minute. My grandfather had the Bible. My father had the Bible. Well, a lot of us as mothers because the fathers are out of the homes. You, you dig it? But they said the, the Bible has been in my house for ages. 
And then you're showing them things in the Bible that they never knew was in there. That's the blind that I'm talking about. Many of us, including me, there was a time when I would read the Bible, all in it, didn't know what the hell I was looking at. Y'all understand? The corrective lenses were not there. But I was blind, opening up and reading and not attributing any, any of this written word, because that's all it really meant, basically. I wasn't getting any connection until someone had to break it down to me. In other words, put some glasses on my face. Then I looked at the same words again, and the words became clear. Hence, corrective lenses. Then the Bible had new meaning. Then the Bible had totally new understanding. And once that happens, then I realized I was a babe. Old, could be old as Methuselah. I was a babe. Y'all all right? Y'all know who Methuselah is, right? Old, old man in the Genesis. I realized that I was a babe. And we had to be like newborn babes then desiring the sincere milk of the word that we may grow thereby. So we had to grow in this understanding that we just found out from a book that has been written thousands of years ago. And it has always been talking about us. But the reason why we never recognized it because our, our vision was not corrected. Although we were looking at it, you got bad eyes and you're driving and you got problem with, this, with distinguishing colors in the traffic light. You run the red light talking about something, it was green. Somebody had to put the correct lenses in your eyes so that you can actually see. Or just, uh, let me use a different word. A stop sign has the word stop on it. You looked at it and you thought it was a yield sign because you couldn't see. But when your corrective lenses came on, you realized the sign said stop. But before the lenses com came, before you got the corrective lenses, you thought that you were seeing clearly. I didn't always wear glasses. I mean, yes, I had them when I was young, but a lot of times I remember, I think it was uh, a, a while went, and my prescription had went bad. You know how you have to have your prescription done every so often. If you get used to wearing glasses and your eyes are getting worse and worse, just follow me, you will begin to become accustomed to the degradation of, of the glasses or the, the, what they call the medicine in the glasses. And you will actually start, to, you will believe that you having, you will believe that you have the same vision the day you first got the glasses until several years later. And as the time goes on, you still think that you have 20-20 vision until you go to the doctor. And then the doctor puts that thing on and starts showing you the different lenses, click, 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 click. And you be like, what, what the hell, yo? Then you realize, well, how in the world was I m making it with these old glasses? Y'all all right? This is what's happened to us. We've at I self, myself, I asked the question, how is it that I survive outside of the knowledge of God to make it to the point where I received some new glasses, the Bible? Y'all all right? So now when you're talking to the brothers and sisters on their fly mission and you're showing them different things in the Bible and as you're showing it to them, you're giving them those new glasses that they never had. They thought that they were seeing properly because Reverend Huckster told them that they had 20-20 vision. And then you show them to say, no, brother, no, sister. And then you show them about themselves. Then they realize, you know what? I need to go to the doctor and get some new glasses. And that's what you've done to them on just the fly mission. I ain't even talking about camp yet. That's a fly mission. Very important uh, step. In our work. Fly mission. I was in Raleigh last week. Uh, we didn't. 
uh, tape it. Uh, I mean, we didn't broadcast it, but I went over this subject a little bit. Those that are in Raleigh that was there last week, they know what I'm talking about. Me, Captain Soraya, and we talked about the importance of fly mission. So the brothers were there, but no, nobody else got it. And um, it was it was it was uh, proper to note that when you go to your people in the street and you're bringing them the message, that is not something to be taken lightly. I know oftentimes, some, sometimes of us that be in this walk a while, we may view the fly mission as less significant than the camp. Let me say that again. Some of us may view, I don't know why, but I'm going to say it. Some of us may view that the flyer mission is less prestigious, I guess I'll use that word, is less prestigious than being in a camp and becoming the other ranks and all the way up. The flyer mission is absolutely crucial to this gospel. Now, let me ask this question so I don't lose my thought. I'm going to come back to what I was reading. Brothers, how many of y'all came in as a result of fly mission, of a flyer that was given to you? Hands up. Let me just see your hands. How many of you came in as a result? Hands up high. Hands up high. One. Anyone else? What about sisters? Any one of y'all coming? Two. Okay. So we got a few people. It's important to note that when that brother came to y'all and presented that flyer, that flyer represented everything that he's talking about. The importance of how the flyer is presented is important. Years ago, y'all, some of y'all know uh, my history and the history of Bishop and that we go back some decades in terms of schools, well, in terms of just knowing each other. Me and Bishop knew each other almost 30 years. And we met in the truth. Um, and back in the old school, flyers were made. When I said flyers were made, the scriptures, Christ, black, Deuteronomy 28, the regular stuff that you would normally see. But who knows what happens when flyers are copied and then the original is lost. And then they take a copy of that copy and make uh, several other copies. And then the original of that gets lost. And then you take copies of that and make more copies. What begins to happen to the, to the, uh, to the words on the paperwork? Say it loud. They start fading out. Sometimes the words, the paper will be straight. I've seen this. The paper will be straight and the words will be turned to the side because they probably laid the thing down on a copier sideways or a little crooked and you get to see it get worse and worse. Y'all know, know what I'm talking about. If you come into me, I'm a man that's blind now. I don't know the Bible. I don't know anything. I've been, I've been under Reverend Huckster. That's all I know. Brother comes to me and he got the Bible. I mean, before he brings the Bible, he hands me a flyer. And I look at the flyer and the flyer look all jacked up. What is that going to tell me about him? What is that going to tell me about what he's presenting to me? You don't really believe this, brother. I looked at, I looked at Huckster's flyers and his flyers are in color and all kind of stuff. You dig it? With doves flying on it. Y'all seen some of those Bible tracks, right? Got doves on it and, and, and people sitting down eating a bowl or something. Got the Negro... I've seen that. I've seen the uh, Watchtower, um, what is that, the Jehovah Witness? They always had like all these Edomites, white people, sitting at the table eating and the Negro bringing them food. I've seen that, huh? Yeah, little tracks and Bible tracks and stuff like that. But they be neat. But here we are with the greatest knowledge of all and our stuff running to the side. You dig what I'm saying? We have to come up on a higher beat. And Thank God we don't have that problem in IUIC. But it was because of that history that I just gave you as to the reason why the flyers always look good. We take pride in that. When the brothers go out, they have to be studied. They have to know 
And when they get out there and they're talking to the brothers and the sisters, and then they present a neat, organized, straight flyer, it sends a message. It sends a message that says, you know what, although I see just a group of them, two or three of them, but with this kind of neatness, there must be a credible and real organized nation behind these brothers. Y'all dig what I'm saying? But there's many facets to, to, to order. There's many facets to organization. Now, I've done a lot of talking. I'm going to go back into the scriptures. But I wanted to just give you all a little bit of that. So we learned that back then. And that's the reason why we have that, uh, that tenacity to be neat in IUIC. Because it was a learning thing. We learned how to do things properly. And even back then, we were doing it. I have some of the old flyers from back then when Bishop Nathaniel would, would actually direct how we did the flyers. Some nice ones. But we understood then the importance of having things neat because the objective was to, you want to bring the people to the wall, to the, to the, to the uh, well to drink the proper water. And if they don't see that the water, if they don't see that the well is organized, if they don't see that the well is clean, if they don't see that the well is neat and upkept, they're not going to come that way. Our people are already unkept. Our people are already shabby and messed up. So they need to be shown a better way. Y'all all right? Where was I reading at? Uh, finish that in Deuteronomy and we'll go back to Isaiah. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 28. The Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of heart. And aston he shall smite us with, 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 uh, with madness and with blindness. That's what it said, right? And blindness and what else? And astonishment of heart. What does astonishment mean? Let's look that word up. What does astonishment mean? Let's look that word up. Astonishment. Well, let's look astonishment up. Let's put it up on the screen. And an astonishment. Bear with us. Bear with us. Okay. Read that. Astonishment. A feeling of great surprise and wonder. Go ahead. The state of being astonished. Uh, let me see. Amazement. You see that word right behind it? Amazement. Amazement. Right. Read it again. A feeling of great surprise and wonder. So let's, the Bible says that we shall be an astonishment. So if an astonishment means that we are surprised, what is the surprise? The surprise is to know how great you used to be. Meaning your real history, who you truly are, and then I'm looking at you now. That's a surprise, meaning unexpected. That's the point. So when we see our people being the way that they are, that is not the way they're supposed to be. You, you brothers that's bringing the flyers to our people, you have that understanding already. So it is your objective, it is your objective and your job to cause the people to understand that they are not operating in the way that they're supposed to be. And in fact, they are living the life of an ast in astonishment because that's not them. Put that definition back up there. So it says, a great surprise, a feeling of great surprise and wonder, meaning, wow, what in the, you know, this is not supposed to be the way, it, the way I'm seeing it. You're wondering. That's what we was reading in Isaiah. Go back to Isaiah. I know we read Deuteronomy. Go back to Isaiah now. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 29, verse 9. Stay yourselves and wonder. And wonder. The wondering, when you look at the people, you see that they are not as the way they're supposed to be. And you wonder because you know, according to the, to the medical chart that you have of Israel, you know how they're supposed to be. But when you look at them, you see an astonishment. You see a wonder. You see great surprise. 
Read on. Cry ye out and cry. So once you see that the people are, are off from where they're supposed to be, then we cry out to them. Now it's our time to reach them. Now it's our time to present that flyer and you explain it to them. Say, listen, brother, come on back home. Sister, come on back home. Y'all all right? So, like I said many times before, once the brothers opened my eyes up and I recognized that I was living the life of being astonished, I was living the life of great surprise. Once I recognized that the brothers gave me, a, gave me the proper glasses, and then I'm able to see what the Bible is really saying and it's really talking about me. The night that I walked into the school, the brothers said, welcome home. And that's exactly how it felt. Because from all that time, I realized that I was lost. I didn't realize I was lost before then, but once the corrective lenses came on to me and I began to see what this Bible was really talking about, it was time for me to fulfill the mission. Come on home. When I came into the school, they told me, welcome home. And that is what we have written on that book that some that y'all all all of y'all supposed to know about. The booklet that we have, Welcome Home. That's the history behind it. Y'all all right? So it's important for us to understand the Bible in these last days and what it means to us. And what it means to us. Hold on a second. And what it means to us. So now, let's read that Isaiah 29 and 9 again. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 29, verse 9. Stay yourselves and wonder. So this is a message to us that know. This is a message to us that have the fly, that have the knowledge, that have the, the prescription, that have the corrective lenses for our people. Stay yourselves, go ahead, and wonder. And wonder. And wonder. We see what we see. We see that our people are messed up. Go ahead. Cry ye out. Then as a result of their uh, terrible condition, we cry out to them. Go ahead. And cry. They are drunken. We, what do we cry? What do we cry? Give me Isaiah 58. Isaiah 58 and 1. This is, this is one of the things that we cry. Give me that and also give me Proverbs uh, 1 and 20. These are the two things that we cry out. It's the book of Isaiah chapter 58 verse 1. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression. So that usually, that's at the camp setting. When we were in the camp, the brothers and sisters are walking by. They think that they're, they think they can see. But you and I know that they're blind. Most of the same people that are passing by us are trying to set up a grill right now. And roast barbecue ribs. What they be cooking on that stuff? Hamburgers and, and hot dogs and all that? Hold on a second. I'll take this call. Hey, Shalom. Hey, Shalom family. Good to be here again. Good to be here with you. Dick was asking, what I want to ask now with the brothers, I see a lot more new faces. So my, I want to ask, uh, how many of you brothers have been with us for at least six months? Raise your hand. I want to see that group. Okay. All right. Okay. So there is quite a few more of y'all over there. So I just, you know, we're glad to be down here with you. So we'll get a chance to speak to y'all later on. Okay? Okay, Dick. All, right. All praise to the Most High. So where were we at? Isaiah 58. Yes. Read that again. Isaiah 58. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 58, verse 1. Cry aloud. Spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. This is what happens when we were in camp. And as the people are passing by, like I was saying earlier, many of our people that pass by the camp, what are they doing now? Out there with a grill. How many of y'all saw the program last night, uh, Bible Book of Our Fathers? How many of y'all didn't see it? Let me put it that way. Okay. All right. No, not a problem. Uh, we went over... 
the 4th of July. You know what? Let me just do that. Let me do that. Let me put it up there. The 4th of you lies. Hey, uh, brothers on the IT, can I get, maybe I should have sent it to him. Yeah, let me send it to you. Just, 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 just lean back. Say something, Cap. Yeah, um, so last night, uh, the class was good. I, I enjoyed it and uh, got a lot of feedback that, from that class. That was a whole series that has been done dealing with Black Lives Matter and do Black rise, Lives Really Matter. And we, we look at our, our situation, we look at our communities, and Dick was touching on those flyer missions. And when you go out and you get, old, like he said, you you able to take something and show people really what they have not been taught. And what we're about to touch on, when he pulled this out, when we pulled it out last night, what they're celebrating today has nothing to do with us. These are not our traditions. We have our own holy days that we keep, but these days like today, we had chains on us. We was in slavery. We was working. While they were celebrating, we was working to build up this place. So how does it today, why will we celebrate us being back in chains again? That's what we're doing. So when you go out there and you see your people out there popping up them grills, they saying it's okay to be in them chains. I'm telling you, huh? Brute 3 and 8, get that. Let's pull it. It's the book of Baruch, chapter 3, verse 8. Uh-huh. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity. We are still here. We, we was brought here. And we're still here serving out this judgment that the Most High has brought against us. What kind of condition are we in? Read that from the top again. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity. We're still here in this land where this is the land of our captors. And we've been held captive. And where's your independence at? There is none. Do they got it deep? Read on. Where thou hast scattered us for a reproach and a curse and to be subject to payments. And that's what we have to deal with. We are subject here and we do make those payments. There's nothing free. We had not got, there, there's not been no restitution for us. Are you kidding me? You work everything you get. You pay for water. Everything you get, you paying for. And we are still subject to these payments here. Think they got it? Y'all got it? Pulse it. Put it up there. And like I said, an example of blindness. We'd be, like the scripture said, we was reading in, hey, read that Isaiah 29 and 9 again. No, where were we at? Yeah, yeah. No, nope, it was here. 29 and 9. 29 and 9. It was the cry ye out. The book of Isaiah, chapter 29, verse 9. Stay yourselves and wonder. Cry ye out and cry. Cry ye out and cry. So our people are mad, like it says in Deuteronomy 28. We, they're beside themselves. And then when we go to Proverbs, we're going to go into more of how, how, how messed up our people are. But here's an example on when, we, when the Bible said, cry ye out. Is that what we were reading or we was in Isaiah 58? Was it reading Isaiah 58? Before I went here? Okay, let me go back to that then. So you, you got the cry out here. Now let me go to uh, Isaiah 58, and then we get the uh, point up there. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 58, verse 1. Cry aloud. Cry aloud. This is what we do in the camps. So the, you're right. That's what we say. We cry aloud in the camp, and we cry to our brothers and our sisters that are walking by. And many of them that went by, passed us by, they went and set up a grill. A barbecue grill and chicken and ham hocks and whatever else they cook on that thing. Y'all all right? I say ham hocks. I don't, I don't even know. Ham hocks. Ain't that the pig ears or something? That's what, that's what they call it? Do they cook that stuff on there? I guess they do, right? No? Huh? They can? I don't know what they do, but, you know. Uh, anyway, that's what they're doing. During the riots, our people broke into the stores, not because of George Floyd. They went to steal chicken, steal chicken wings, hamburgers, hot dogs, grills, lighter fluid. Huh? 
charcoal to do exactly what they're doing now. So they pass by us while we are crying aloud to them, trying to get them to wake up. And they're on their way to the grill. Don't they have family reunions on these kind of days? Ain't this the day that they do it? Family reunion? Am I right? It, it's, it, it's on this so-called holiday, right? Family reunions. Every year. Lord have mercy. And all that madness going on. Give me, <laughs> give me Amos 5. Amos 5. I'm jumping all over the place. Y'all all right? Y'all with me? I'm showing you that our people are sick. Sometimes you, you just can't rush through this kind of stuff. Sometimes you have to take your time and really understand the, the mental plight that's going on in our brother's and sister's head. You dig what I'm saying? When we read Deuteronomy 28, and the Lord shall smite thee with madness, that means we have an understanding that our people are crazy. And if we have that understanding, then we know where they need to be. And that's the reason why we are given the Bible to reach out to them. And it begins with a flyer. You got something? Yeah, I just wanted to bring out, you know, a lot of times, you know, we'd be out Turn there. Turn them up a little, you're a little, little, you're a little low. Hello? Yeah. All right. You know, a lot of times we'll be out in the street teaching and whatnot, and you would be you would be surprised about how many times you'd hear people say, I was never a slave. I'm not a slave now. So when we're talking about the blindness, that's part of the blindness that our people suffer from. They won't even acknowledge that their what their history actually is. That's yes, right. Blindness. Super blindness. So now where were we at? Amos. Amos five. Now they, they so they at the family reunion. They got the pork ribs and all that stuff. Amos, what is it? Five twenty. Twenty one. It's been a while since I read that thing. Uh, read it. The book of Amos, chapter five, verse twenty one. I hate, I despise your feast days. Hold it now. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Read it again. The book of Amos, chapter five, verse twenty one. I hate. God says, I hate. Go ahead. I despise. I despise. Your feast days. Your feast days. Why is it that God says that he hates our feast days? Why is he saying that? Why? I'm going to ask somebody. Who knows? Why does God say he hates our feast days? Yes. Because we do not keep the commandments anymore. Exactly. That's exactly what it means. Say it again louder. Because we do not keep the commandments anymore. Because we're not keeping the commandments anymore. So even though, because back then, some of us, give me Isaiah. Let me just, just, let me just touch on that. Let me just give you a little bit of history. Isaiah 1 and, yes, around 14. Because... We weren't keeping no 4th of July back then when that was being said. Y'all all right? Y'all understand what I'm saying? So the Most High still had ought with us. Is it the 14th verse that I want? Yes, sir. Okay. I know it's the first chapter. Give me a second. Give me a second. Let me see if that's where I want to start at. Uh, mm, 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 mm. Dum, 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 dum. Uh. Start with, uh, <laughs> start at verse 11. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 11. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me? Go ahead. Saith the Lord. I am full of the burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts, and I delight not in the blood of bullocks. Or of lambs, or of he goats. So you see what the Most High is saying? So we weren't celebrating, quote unquote, the 4th of July here, obviously. So we called ourselves gathering together as Israel. But we were wicked as hell. And we still said we're going to sacrifice unto the Lord. Y'all all right? I want y'all to understand what we're reading. Read it again. The book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 11. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me? The Most High said, what is the reason that you're coming to me with your sacrifices? Why? Because if you're not, he said, I'd rather you obey than what? Than what? 
than sacrifice because the whole objective of the whole Bible is for us to obey him. But if we choose not to obey him and we want to do everything else, the Lord said, I don't need that. I need you to obey. Read it. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me? Go ahead. Say it the Lord. Say it the Lord. Go ahead. I am full of the burnt offerings of rams. Meaning I'm sick of you. And I am full of your garbage. Go ahead. And the fat of fed beasts. And I delight not in the blood of bullocks or of, rent of lambs or of he goats. These were legal, according to the law, meats for sacrificing. So it's not so much about what they were doing, because there ain't no pork on this. Y'all dig it? These are legal according to the law, when you read it in the, in, in the Leviticus and all that. These are legal. So the Lord said, I don't delight in that, because along with your sacrifice, there's supposed to be obedience. And if we choose to be disobedient, then what is the purpose of you telling me you're sorry, and you're still wicked as hell? That's the point. I'm just bringing it up today. I'm using our language today your kids go off and do something you know you done told them not to do this you told them you gave them the rules already before you get ready to tear that butt up legally because no people to watch it y'all all right they already say i'm sorry well why is it that you're sorry now and what does your sorry really mean? It means I've learned my lesson. I won't do it no more. But is that the case? No. Nine times out of ten, they go right back and do it again and do it again and do it again and to do it again until the Lord says, you know what? I've had enough of your sorries. I had enough of your sacrificing. Then he brings judgment. Y'all all right? And that's what happens. Some, a lot of times, these kids of ours that don't want to listen with their sorries and their sorries, oh, hell, that mom ain't going to do nothing. Dad ain't going to do nothing. And they continue to do it, and they continue to do it until what happens? They get the nightstick from the cop. They get the mace. They get the stun gun. They get jail, or they get a bullet. That'd be the Lord's judgment. Y'all all right? That's Romans, the 13th chapter, in case anybody was wondering. Okay? He said, if thou will not be afraid of the powers when you had the powers, then I'm going to put you up underneath this beast, and he got the sword, and he ain't going to play with you. Where we at? The book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 12. When ye come to appear before me, who hath required this at, at your hand to tread my courts? Listen to this. He said, when you, come be, when you come to appear before me, just like you come into a courtroom, the Lord is saying, who has required this at your hands to tread your wicked behinds into my courtroom? Because you don't mean, you, your sorrow is not godly. That's what he's saying. You're full of BS. I ain't done with the fourth of you lies yet. I'm coming back to that. Y'all all right? So he said, who told you to come in here? With your lying selves. You're not about what my Bible is talking about. You're not about keeping the laws. You're not about obeying what I said. Go ahead. Bring no more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination unto me. Wait a minute. The Lord said incense are an abomination. Wait a minute. Don't we love incense, brothers? Well, the Lord is saying, but if you're going to be wicked as hell, your incense mean garbage. Read it again. Bring no more vain oblations. Bring no more vain oblations. Oblations is talking about your sacrifice. The Lord is calling that vain because your sacrifice means nothing if there's no real effort to repent. So he calls your sacrifices vain. Go ahead. Incense is an abomination unto me. It's incense is an abomination to the Most High when the Most High knows your heart. The Most High knows that you're only doing this. Who you think you're fooling? Go ahead. The new moons and Sabbaths, the calling of assemblies, I, I cannot away with. So here we, new moon coming up, brothers. 
Sabbath coming up. Hey, let's go. Let's go. And we wicked as hell. The most I said, I don't care about none of that. Because the objective of all of this is to obey the commandments. Read. It is iniquity. <laughs> it isn't an, is it an iniquity to keep the Sabbath? No. Is it an iniquity to keep the new moons? No. Is it an iniquity to gather the assemblies? No. So why is the most high calling it iniquity? Because it's all being done in vain. Y'all all right? Read. Even the solemn meeting. Your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hated. Mm. They are a trouble unto me. So the most high say your new moons. Now this was, this was how he was talking to us back then. So imagine how he feels now. Looking at the same descendants of the Israelites talking about the 4th of July. They don't even know they're Israel. They ain't repenting at all. And the Lord is looking at his heritage and seeing how far mad. We're more crazy now. At least back here, we knew we were Israel. Now we are completely insane. Y'all all right? I'm going to show you how insane we are. All right, that's it on that. Y'all got that part, right? Now let's go back to Amos, and then we're going to get into this thing here with Frederick Douglass. Show you how crazy our people are and the massive job that we have to do as the enlightened ones. It's the book of Amos, chapter 5, verse 21. I hate, I despise your feast days. The Lord said, I hate, I despise your feast days. He's still talking to Israel that know they're Israel. But bringing it up to date, you know damn well he's talking about us now. Y'all all right? He says, I hate, I despise your feast days. I'm calling it all an abomination because none of it is being done in righteousness. That's what the Lord is saying. Go ahead. And I will not smell in your solemn assembly. And I will not smell in your solemn assembly because... The, the, the aroma of, the, of the, uh, the righteous sacrifices are received by the Most High. Y'all understand? Read. Though ye offer me burnt offerings. Though you offer me burnt offering, bur the burnt offering was what we was reading in Isaiah. That mess that they got on the grill ain't no burnt offerings to the Most High at all. Y'all dig it? That's how far gone our people are. Go ahead. And your meat offerings... I will not accept them. I will not accept them. He's talking about us as Israel, but just imagine how he's looking at that now. These same people that's out there with the barbecue grill and all of that are the same descendants that came over here on the slave ships. They are the people that God talked about in the Bible. So these are his children. These are his people. And they're doing things that's pissing him off. Read. Neither will I regard the peace offering offerings of your fat beast. I don't want to hear none of that garbage. I don't want to smell it. I don't want to have nothing to do with it. Go ahead. Take thou away from me the noise of thy song. I don't want to hear your, your singing. They probably got choir and all that. He don't want to hear none of that madness. Go ahead. For I will not hear the melody of thy vials. I'm not hearing none of that because I... Oh, I I uh, command you to obey me rather than sacrifice. That's what he was saying back then. Right now, they are totally lost. Now, let's get the article. Let's show you how lost they are. Like I said, when the camp go out there to speak, they're speaking to the people and they're passing us by. This is going back to what we were talking about in Isaiah, where it says, stay, stay yourselves and wonder, cry ye out and cry. That's what it's talking about. We're crying unto them trying to cry unto them to repent and return and come back home. They don't want to hear that. In Isaiah, it said the same thing. In Isaiah, uh, what was it? What was we reading at 58 and 1? Cry, uh, cry ye out. How it go? Isaiah 58. Isaiah. Cry ye out. and spare. I want to read it so I can get, the, get my thoughts together. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 58, verse on. 1. Cry aloud. Spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. So when we're teaching the people, we're lifting our voices up. This is where the camp is coming in. We're giving it to them loud, telling them they need to straighten up and repent. And they're passing this by like it's nothing. 
and they're going right to celebrate the 4th of July's. Y'all all right? So now let's see what they're actually doing. Passing us by. This is the reason why the Lord said he hates everything that we do that is not in accord to his scriptures. Mm, read that. What to the slave is the 4th of July? In other words, what does the 4th of July has to do with the descendants of slaves? And I'm saying the descendant of slaves because right now we are the descendants of us that was actually in them fields building up. But what Frederick Douglass was saying is you're going to find out something. Read it again. What to the slave is the 4th of July? What to the slave is the 4th of July? Read the bottom. Read the rest of that right there. Go ahead. Is the title now given to a speech by Frederick Douglass delivered on July 5th, 1852? Look at the date. It is, a, it is the title now given to a speech by Frederick Douglass. He delivered the speech on July the 5th, which is after the 4th. He delivered this on the 5th. And what was the date? What was the year? 1852. There's some significance in this understanding. If this was said in 1852 on July 5th, that means July 4th, 1776, was when they uh, adopted what they call the date of independence. Am I right? What they call the spirit of 76. The day of independence. Independence Day that they got from the British. So you're going to understand, which is basically another group of Edomites. But they claim to have gotten, they claim, that's the beginning of this country. 1776. So in 1776, July 4th, that is the date that they attributed to America's freedom from British rule. So during 1776, on the 4th of July, and then approximately 60 or 70 years later, Frederick Douglass makes this speech. Y'all all right? Read it. It says what? In the title, it's, it's the title. What to the slave is the 4th of July? It's a title now given to a speech by Frederick Douglass, delivered on July 5th, 1852. 1852, which is after 1776, July 4th. Go ahead. In Corinthian Hall. This is where it was given at. Go ahead. Rochester, New York, addressing the Rochester Ladies Anti-Slavery Society. So this is the speech that Frederick Douglass was making approximately 70 some odd years later. This huh? Hello? 76. Go ahead. Thank you. The speech is perhaps the most widely known of all the Frederick Douglass writings, save the autobiographies. So the speech was what? It's perhaps the most widely known of all the Frederick Douglass writings, save his autobiography. So his autobiographies was the only thing that was more pronounced in terms of his speeches. So that means after the autobiography of Frederick Douglass, the next most widely known or publicized speech was this speech here. Go ahead. Many copies of one section of it, beginning in Para 32. Paragraph 32, I believe that's what that is. Go ahead. Have been circulated online. Due Which is what we're reading. Go ahead. Due to this and the variant titles given to it in various places, and the fact that it is called a July 4th oration, but was actually delivered on July 5th, some confusion has arisen about the date and contents of the speech. Some confusion has arisen concerning the date and the contents of the speech. No date is right, and the speech is right. There's no confusion because it's going to make it clear. Read. The speech has since been published under the above title in the Frederick Douglass Papers, Series 1, Volume 2. Now, uh, read on. While referring to the celebrations of the Independence Day in the United States the day before, the speech explores the constitutional and values-based arguments against the continued existence of slavery in the United States. Whoa, 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 whoa. Did y'all see, did y'all see that? Huh? But listen to what he's saying. Yeah, it's slick, but it ain't slick enough. Who can't understand what this is saying? Read that paragraph again. 
while referring to the celebrations of the Independence Day in the United States. So Frederick Douglass, while, while referring, making reference to the celebration of Independence Day, the 4th of July, which we call the 4th of July, go ahead, in the United States, go ahead. The day before, the speech explores the constitutional and values-based arguments against the continued existence of slavery in the United States. Do you see what this is saying? It said the speech explores the constitution, constitutional and values and values based arguments. So the in other words, the so-called white people viewed this as valuable and this was their particular uh celebration. And he said he put that in contrast to the continued existence of slavery in the United States. So this statement was made in, in what was the date? What was the date? 18. 1852. So in 1852, guess where black people were? In the continued existence of slavery in the United States. So what the hell are our people talking about the 4th of July? In 1776, when our butts was in slavery. Our butts was in slavery from 1776 all the way up and beyond the date that Frederick Douglass made that speech. So when our people pass by us to go and get on the grill to celebrate this, you're actually celebrating slavery. So tell me, why in the world are they up, upset about the Confederate flag? What is it? Ain't that the, ain't that the flag down here, the Confederate flag? On the, or they, they, they're having some, some talk for the South? The Confederate flag on it. Oh, you got to take it down. Blah, 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 blah. But now you out there celebrating. <laughs> you celebrating slavery. Madness. Crazy. Far beyond. Astonished. Surprised. A wonder. This is happening now. They pass by all this wisdom. To go get on a grill. That's how crazy your brethren and sisters are. So now, let's go back to Isaiah 29 and 9 again. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 29, verse 9. Stay yourselves and wonder. Cry ye out and cry. They are drunken. They are drunken with stupidity. They are drunken with lies. They are drunken with ham hocks and pork ribs and all that madness on the grill. And they got all kinds of liquors and all of that stuff around the grill. Uh, you know a fight going to break out. I ain't never liked your black ears, you know. All that's going to go down in that daggone thing. A shootout. And when they dial 911, the police going to be like, listen, y'all defunded us. We ain't coming. <laughs> Huh? <sighs> Read it again. The book of Isaiah, chapter 29, verse 9. Stay yourselves and wonder. Cry ye out and cry. They are drunken. Our people are drunk. But not with wine. But they are not drunk with wine. They are drunk with lies. They are drunk with philosophy. Drunk with craziness. Drunk with being out of their mind. Go ahead. They stagger. They stagger from one religion to this philosophy, Chango, <coughs> Buddha, Baptist, Muslim. Staggering. Go ahead. But not with strong drink. They're not staggering because they drank Thunderbird. <laughs> they don't know what to talk about. Did I go back too far? I don't, know. I don't know nothing about it either. I just laugh about it every time I bring it up. I ain't drinking that stuff. They said it's stuff like shoe polish. But I ain't drinking that daggone mess. Huh? Jet fuel. Wild Irish rose. <laughs> I heard of some of these drinks. Kiwi shoe polish. That's all it is. But no, they ain't drunk on that. They're drunk on a bad state of mind. Read on. 
For the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep. So we, as the brothers and the sisters, so you can understand, because they have a role in this too. To live by an example of the righteous sisters in the Bible. Y'all all right? Read. And had closed your eyes. So the Lord has poured out upon our people that are out there with deep sleep. And he has closed the eyes of the people. Go ahead. The prophets and your rulers, the seers have he covered. That's the reason why the preachers don't understand what this Bible is talking about. Like I said before, Re Reverend Huckster never showed me anything about the Bible in terms of who I was. It took brothers like you with your flyer and called me over, hey, brother, you want to know why they came over? Because all of us are walking around with a what's happening mentality. You know what I'm talking about, right? I'm going to explain that. You see brothers in the street? Hey, man, what's happening? What's going on? Don't y'all always hear that? What's the word for the day? What's the word? What's, what, what's the word of knowledge? What's going on? Hey, man, what's up? What's up, B? You know the reason why we're saying that? Well, we just think it's just a statement. We're saying that because we have a big question mark in our spirit. So it's not, it's a force of habit that we say it, but that's really our spirit asking, can somebody tell me what the hell's going on? Because I'm, this don't feel normal. Y'all all right? That's what it really is. And so when you go out there in the street, you can already see that our people have that question to mark in their mind. None of our people are whole. None of them. When they're passing you by, they're going somewhere to get tied up into something that make them feel secure because they don't know about this. They'll latch themselves on to the barbecue. They'll latch themselves on to gangs. They'll latch themselves on to false religion, Muslim, Baptist, all that. They will latch themselves on to anything for some kind of stability, but they have not found the real stability yet, which is what you're carrying. Y'all understand? All right, let me... Let me shift gears a little bit. I wanted to give you some understanding about where the people are. So now, I was once in that position. You were once in that position. We came into the body. We're in now. Give me Matthew 26. Matthew 26. Matthew 26 and verse 36. It's the book of Matthew. Chapter 26, verse 36. Now, I'm reading. Of, now, I talked about those that are on the outside of us. Y'all all right? Those that have not come into this truth yet. Now, I'm talking about us. This is still in reference to the Bible in these last days. It's going to make sense as I continue. Read. Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane. Mm -hmm. And saith unto the disciples, sit ye here. While I go up, while I go and pray yonder. Go ahead. And this he, was before he was killed. Christ. Go ahead. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them. Then said Christ unto the disciples. Go ahead. My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here. Wait ye here. And watch with me. Because I'm getting ready to go up there and pray to the Father. Y'all know what I'm talking about here, right? Some of y'all, you know what we're talking about? We went to pray to the Father before he was killed. It's talking about Christ. Read. And he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. You see, now you, you see what it said there? And he went a little farther... To, and he fell on his face, Christ, and he prayed, saying, Oh, my father, is it possible, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. What is he saying? Tell me what's happening here. On the end there. Yes. Shalom, hmm. Deacon. Shalom. I told you, Michael Bass. He didn't want to be put to death. Right. But what? 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 But did he know he was going to get put to death before this? Yes, sir. He knew it. So what was happening? Why did he? Why did he say, "Oh, Father, take this"? Yeah, he didn't want to be put to death. But I want you to dig a little bit more in it. What was happening? 
he was starting to feel he was starting to feel the burden and everything. Right. Else on. That's what I want you to get to. He's letting you know that he's a man. He's letting you know like we are. We get tempted with our feelings. Thank you. Our, uh, the oppression and the reality of this walk begins to get heavy on us. Now, this is us in here now. We already talked about our people out there that don't know nothing about this. Now we're talking about us now. Y'all all right? Read that again. And he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. So at this point, what did he do? Huh? He manned up. That's the word right there. He manned up. So I say that to say this here because, well, let's read on. I'm going to back up to that. Read on. And he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep. Whoa. He came to the disciples and he findeth the disciples sleep. Go ahead. And saith unto Peter, what? Could ye not watch with me one hour? What? He said, what? what? He said, what? Could you not? Watch with me for one hour? What is happening here? What's going on here in these lines of dialogue we're reading about? What's going on? Who could tell me? Anybody? At this time, uh, Christ was uh, feeling alone. When, they were, when Peter and the rest of them were supposed to, to watch with him, but they're not doing that. So there was nobody really have his back. But okay, nobody to have his back, but Christ is... Mm, I'm going to go a little bit deeper than that. That's, that's correct, but I want to go a little deeper than that. They did not have his back. All right, read the rest of it. It's going gone, it's gone to clear up. Read on. Read on. Watch and pray. That ye enter not into temptation. That's part of it there. That ye enter not into temptation. What was the temptation that he was talking about? Well, read the whole thing. Maybe the whole thing will come out. Read 41. The whole verse. The book of Matthew chapter 26 verse 41. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing. The spirit indeed is willing, but what? But the flesh is weak. Now, you got the context now. Tell, talk to me. What's happening? Why is Christ saying this? Say Look that at the whole verse. The whole 41. We Go ahead. Yes. I mean, look at it. Break the whole verse down. Yes. He said, watch and pray that he enter not into temptation. Because uh, most of the time when we're praying, our spirit is more Actually, toward the Father, we know, and then uh, we're not thinking anything fleshly at that time. But uh, he said the spirit indeed is uh, willing, but the flesh is weak. Tell me but about the flesh is weak. The spirit is willing, but the flesh be, is weak. Be, because that's the reason the flesh feel tired. It was that's why they were sleeping. But they actually they were really willing, you know, to watch with him, but they couldn't. So why is because Christ they were tired? Okay, what is the message that Christ is telling us today with this? Uh, actually, I, I don't get that. Okay, all right, not a problem, not a problem. Anybody else? All right, over here. Remember now, we in this truth, right? We we here, we 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 here. This, these are the disciples. These are not the people walking by to go grill. These are the people that's in the in the truth. These are the disciples. Shalom, D. Shalom, um, brother Michael. No excuses. What do you mean no excuses? I mean, what? you say we get tired and stuff, but we have to push, and it's true. But what would make you, what would make you push? Um, staying girded up, talking to my brothers. He said watch. Up. He said watch, watch, watch as well as pray. What that part mean? You, 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 okay. You're doing fine. You right. don't, 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 okay. don't feel any way about them. Just want you to just dig it a little more. When he say watch, what does he mean when he say he wants us to watch? Watch. Um, watch as well as pray. Remember the question that I... Okay, you can sit. You can okay. sit. Let me, let me explain. Remember okay. when I said that people ask, how is it that you stayed in this truth and all of this? Remember I was talking about that earlier? What is... What brings your fear? Well, yes, we obey the commandments, but it's the judgment 
And what else? The prophecies of the Bible. You know that the Lord is going to destroy. Give me Isaiah uh, 13 and 6. Let me use this as an example. Isaiah 13 and 6. Watch as, as well as pray. Isaiah 13, 6. Book of Isaiah, chapter 13, verse 6. Hold up. Let me look at it. Read from 6 to 9. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 13, verse 6. Howl ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand. What does howl mean? What does howl mean? H-O-W-L. What does howl mean? Howl ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand. What does, what does, when you hear that word howl, what, what do you think of? The wolf. What is the wolf coming to do? Feed you? Huh? It's coming to devour you, right? Like they had a movie many years ago called The Howling. Okay? So, the Bible says, howl ye. Why? Because the day of the Lord is at hand. So if the day of the Lord is at hand, it's something that, that's supposed to make us stand up and gird ourselves. Watch and well as pray. Pray that we don't get caught on the wrong side of the day of the Lord. Read that whole verse. The book of Isaiah, chapter 13, verse 6. How will ye? For the day of the Lord is at hand. So what is it about the day of the Lord that we need to be howling about? It shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. That's where my fear comes in at, because I don't want to get caught on the wrong side of that destruction. You dig it? So the message that Christ is saying, although the spirit is willing, the flesh is weak. Do not allow the flesh or the temptation of the flesh to cause you to be not mindful of the day of the Lord. You dig it? You follow what I'm getting at? Read. Therefore shall all hands be faint. Because in the day of the Lord, as the, as the Lord's day is coming, all hands are going to be weak when they find out that this is a day that they don't want. That's what's going on with the society now, the Bible in these times. As this, as, as this evil is continuing to flow throughout all of this system, the rulers of this wicked society is trying their best to stop the prophecies of the Bible. They're trying to get rid of the Bible. They're trying to, the, the, the whole LGBT movement is against the Bible. All of what you see going on out here, even what you call Black Lives Matter, is eventually going to turn against everyone that hold this Bible. Y'all don't even see it yet. I can understand that. Y'all might not understand it because our people are still psyched out on thinking, why is he condemning something that's speaking up for black people? Because they gave, they gave the label of Black Lives Matter, but in reality, they're not caring about the lives of black people at all. But because they were clever enough to use that name, it suckered a lot of us. Put us to sleep. So they'll come to you like your brothers. I'm black just like you. But at the same time, they're trying to tear you apart. But you won't even see it coming because they look like you, undercover brother. Y'all all right? Now, I don't know how many of y'all seen this because I think I have to, I kind of get the feeling that maybe I'm Black Lives Matter bashing. Is that the case? Am I beating up on Black Lives Matter? Maybe I am. Where, can I get the thing that we posted up a couple of weeks? I don't know how many of y'all saw that because I, I wasn't with you. But I don't know if y'all paid attention or did y'all even see it. When on several classes, Bishop brought it up and I brought it up on, on the show that we do. The mission statement of Black Lives Matter. Did y'all see the points that we were bringing out in that? They are about getting, okay, well, brother said they got it. They are about getting rid of the age of consent. So that means there's no such thing as statutory rape. That's what they say, that we want a society free. What did they, I think there was another word they used. 
No, 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 no. There was a word that they use. They want an interconnectional communal relationship, something that's free of ageism. Ageism meaning generational differences. They said they want to get rid of that. So Black Lives Matter used the word ageism, which they're trying to get rid of. Nambla, North American boy, North American man, boy, love association. Wow, them letters. Boy association. They advocate that they want to uh, get rid of the aged of consent law that have locked up people for statutory rape, basically. For them engaging in sexual activity with minors. And people have been jailed for this. Nambla said that their, that their, that their effort is to get those people taken out of jail and to abolish age of consent laws. So Nambla and Black Lives Matter is both saying the same thing. Nambla believes in men with boys in a love association. And they're saying that the ageism, I mean the consent, is to be abolished so that a boy that's eight years old can say, I want big hairy Steve to deal with me. And we're in love. That's what they're saying. That's what this is online today. People can join this today. What's, huh? Uh, yeah, since, since, since the brothers got it, let's put it up there. Let's put it up there. Since, since it came up, that I don't think everybody's seen it. Go down to where it says what we believe. What we believe, move down. I've got to zoom it in. Come down, come down, because I ain't going to spend all day on this, because y'all, we did videos on this. I'm going to get right to the point. Move down, 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 down. Black Lives Matter. Conserve, uh, we recommend healing beyond that. Now, let me show you something. Let's go back to the top for a minute. Let me show you something. Now, look at the big words. You know, they always tell you the, uh, the details. The, what they say, the devil is in the details, right? Got to read the fine print. But this is what you see. They said four years ago, what is now known as Black Lives Matter Global Network began to organize. It started out as a chapter-based, member-led organization whose mission was to build local power and to intervene when violence was afflicted on black communities by the, by the states and vigilantes. So we would look at that and say, you know what? Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! You'd be all over it because you think that that's what it's about. But that's the big print. That's the doll in the window. Can you dig it? But you don't know what's in the back room. Y'all digging this? Now jump down to what they are really about. Move down. That was to get you. That was to hook you in. Come on down. Come on down. Come on down. Come on down. We make, hold it right there. There it is right there. We make space. Come on up. Let's, let's come on up. I mean, come on down. Because I want to stop right there. Stop right there. Right there. It's at the top of the line. We make space, Black Lives Matter is saying this, we make space for transgender brothers and sisters to participate and lead Black Lives Matter. You turn your point, mic on, man. <laughs> what Dick is bringing out to that point now, understand what he was talking about with NAMBLA and uh, this organization here. What you got to understand, when they talk about sisters and brothers to participate and lead, that takes away that age group. They trying to they trying to disannul that age group. They want to be able to deal with young men and young women. And they telling you who look, look who's actually look who they telling uh, they really for transgenders, brothers and sisters. You don't see black people in where, there at where all. They at? Where are well, people at? But it's, it gets worse. It gets worse. I know some of them say, "Nah, Dick, Dick, Dick ain't fair, man. He he don't he don't see these people are really for us." We make space for transgender brothers and sisters to participate and lead. Uh, jump down. I ain't gonna, let me see. Jump down. Jump to see where it says we disrupt. We disrupt right there. We disrupt the Western described prescribed nuclear family 
What is the nuclear family, brothers and sisters? Man, woman, children. That's what's known as a nuclear family. They said that they disrupt that. So if they disrupt that, that means no fathers. That means kill the man. Get rid of the man. Who's saying this? Black Lives Matter. Read. Uh, the next paragraph. We foster. We foster a queer... Do y'all see the words? Go ahead. We foster, we foster a queer affirming network. When we gather, we do so with the intention of freeing ourselves from the tight grip of hetero, heteronormative, heteronormative thinking. thinking. You and I think heteronormative. But they said that's a tight grip, like you're being oppressed. And we want to free you from normal thinking. We want to free you from looking for a woman to have a nuclear family. We want to free you women from the grip of looking for a man to have a nuclear family. We want to free you from that. Black Lives Matter. But you didn't see this because this wasn't in the front window. This was not on the window sticker when you bought the car. <laughs> hey, Dick, but yeah. It's, but it's hidden in plain sight. It's hidden in plain sight. Blind. So these are some of the, the reason why I brought this up. I want the word, I want the word ageism. Where is that at? Right. The next one. That's, the, that's coming up right there. Read that. We cultivate. We cultivate an intergenerational and communal network. Intergenerational. That's the word right there. Intergenerational, meaning that all the generations are blurred. There's no lines of definition. There's no elders so you can understand. There's no fathers. There's no children. Everybody's the same. Black Lives Matter. I told you, they used that as a skateboard to get into the Supreme Court to enforce what you're looking at. That's the reason why it's all over your TV now. That's the reason why it's all over the internet. That's the reason why by the eighth grade, your children must learn about LGBT. That's law. They just passed it. Y'all didn't hear what I said, did you? Three days ago, it started. They said by the eighth, because in the eighth grade, your children are the most impressionable. We cultivate an intergenerational, meaning no lines. So that means an eight-year-old could be with a 48-year-old man. That's what the rest of this says. It says a communal network that is free from ageism. Ageism is the same thing as NAMBLA. Age of consent. That's what they're talking about. That's what it's talking about. When you get rid of when you get rid of the lines that separates a minor from an adult, you've gotten rid of ageism. You've gotten rid of age of consent. You've gotten rid of that. And that's exactly what those other sites bring up when you read about them. When you read about NAMBLA and you read about that's what they're talking about. So it's letting you know that they are all together on this. That's what you're looking at. So, this is what's going on today. The Bible is against all of this. And these people are so violent. When I say these people, that same spirit was back there in Sodom and Gomorrah. They're not victims. They're not victims. Do you mean to tell me that that situation that was going on in Sodom and Gomorrah with Lot, those people were aggressive as hell. They said, move Lot. Lot said, do not to these men. Don't do so wickedly. They said, man, we will break you in half and do to you what we're going to do to the men. And the people that was out there, let's read it. Let's read it. Give me, give me, give it to me. Give it to me. 
I'm digressing. I just got to do this. I'm getting back to my lesson. Y'all all right? Give me that, what is it, ninth, uh, what's the chapter? 19, I think. No, is it that far? Genesis. 19 and 1. Uh, 12. Yeah, it's in the 19th chapter. Give me a second. Bear with me, brothers and sisters. I want to, yeah, read the first few verses because it starts it right away. Just listen to this. I'm going to show you ageism. I'm going to show you the abolishing of ageism right now. Watch this. It's the book of Genesis, chapter 19, verse 1. And there came two angels to Sodom at even. And there came two angels to Sodom, meaning the city of Sodom, where Lot was. Go ahead. And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lot sat at the head, and, and he could see this. He's at the gate, the leader. Go ahead. And Lot, seeing them, arose up to meet them. And Watch he, this. He rose up to meet them. Go ahead. And he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. Because the angels are coming to him. Come on. And he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night. Now, Lot said, listen, he met the brothers at the gate, at the top of the city. And they come to visit Lot. Lot already knows the wickedness back there. He says, listen, we ain't got time to talk. <laughs> you got to get off the street now. Read it. And he said, behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house and tarry all night and wash your feet. And ye shall rise up early and go on your ways. Meaning, I can't have you out on the street. Because you're going to get seen. Watch this. And they said, nay, but we will abide in the street all night. Oh, no. The angels must not know what's going on. I can't have you out there. Read. And he pressed upon them. Now, these are the angels now, so they know what's happening. Go ahead. And he pressed upon them he, greatly. He pressed upon them. Give me, so you can understand, because I said at the beginning, give me in the back, in the New Testament where it said that he was vexed by the conversation. I'm going to show you that lot knew. What kind of people was in this city? Hold on. You know what I'm talking about St. Peter's? Uh, second chapter? Like around the eighth verse or something like that? Hang with me, brothers. I didn't lose the topic. Y'all all right? Yeah, Peter's chapter 2, verse 7. Yeah, read that. It's the book of Second Peter's chapter 2, verse 7. And delivered just lot. Vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. So he delivered just, this is the Lord, after he had destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah with fire and brimstone. Y'all understand that? Let the brothers get it. I see brothers looking for it. Tell them where you're at again. It's the book of Second Peter, chapter 2, verse 7. This is an example of us watching so you can understand. This is because we see the prophecies and we understand the spirits that are around us now. That's what this whole agenda is about. That's what Isaiah 1 and 9 is about, to, just so you can understand. This is what, when, 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 the, when, when I was saying the Bible in these times, they're calling us a hate group. They're really talking about the Bible. Christ said, listen, no, not. He said, no, that it is not you that they hate, but they hate you because I am in you. You know what I'm talking about? How many of y'all do not know what I mean when I said that statement? Hands up. How many of y'all don't know about what I just said? Christ said, if the world hated, what did he say? If the world hates you, know that it hated me before they hated you. That's what he's saying. He said, because I am in you. That's the reason why they hate you. And y'all have seen that. Y'all have seen people that have turned away from this truth. They went out from among us. And then they try to speak evil of all the men and the women that are still in this gospel. But w w watch what I'm about to say. If any one of us leave and join them, we're in love again. Y'all all right? Y'all understand what I'm saying, right? But as long as, because it's not you, it's not you per se, they hate you because you're rolling in this. But if you turn your back on this and join the wicked, you will be in the company of good folk until eventually they turn on each other because Satan is behind them. Y'all understand what I'm saying, right? Where am I at? Where am I at? Where am I going? What did I ask for? 
Genesis 19, verse 4, King James Version. But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, come past the house round, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. Advocating old and young men together to be in the same thought today goes against ageism. So go, go read that lot again in the back. It's the book of 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 7. And delivered just lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them, and seeing and hearing. That's what I wanted. I wanted more of that. And seeing and hearing. And he, lot was seeing this. And what? And hearing. And hearing the conversations. Listen. Vexed his righteous soul. From what did the filthy communications do? Vexed his righteous soul. It vexed Lot's soul. Read. From day to day with their unlawful deeds. With their unlawful deeds. So Lot was vexed with this kind of business going on all around him. So he knew what was in his city. Y'all all right? I ain't done with the ageism yet. I'm showing you that the same spirit that's back there is here today, along with the Bible in these last days. And you brothers and you sisters, you have to remain steadfast, stay yourselves in this gospel and endure the temptations because there's going to be lots of them. Read. Go give me Isaiah 1 and 9. And just bring the context so you'll know where we at. Isaiah 1 and 9, to show you the fight that we are against. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 9. Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant. The very small remnant is 144,000, meaning us, the 12 tribes of Israel, 12,000 out of each tribe. We're the small remnant. We're the enlightened ones. We're the ones that understand that our people are crazy. We're the ones that understand that our people have not got their corrective lenses. Y'all all right? We're the ones that understand that they, do not under they don't know who they are. They don't know how far off base they are. They don't know these things. But we do. That's that small remnant that the Most High is dealing with. Read. Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant, we should have been as Sodom. And we should have been like unto Gomorrah. Somebody stand up and tell me what that statement is saying. Stand up. Well, the brother in the back, let me get him. What is that statement saying? Uh, Shalom, Most High Christ. Bless. Shalom, Most High Christ. Bless. What is that statement saying? Um, that's basically saying that he didn't leave his people here, who he always uh, loved, that he would have been destroyed this place because of his wickedness. Nah, read it again. So, no, no, no. Tell me, say it again. Say it a little louder. I said if he'd have, um Yeah, that's right. With, the, with, the, with the base. Oh, my bad. If no, he didn't, good, um, good, you're good. Go if, ahead. If he didn't leave his people here, if he you know, didn't that not, remnant, what did he say? He did, that remnant, go the ahead. Chosen, the chosen seed, yes. he would have been destroyed this place for, for his wickedness. Uh, he would have destroyed this place for his wickedness? No. That's good, but that ain't what it's saying. Somebody else. I want you to listen to the answer now. Y'all ain't going to like the answer. So it's going into those that are going to keep the commandments and push forth his righteousness. Otherwise, the seed of Israel would have been destroyed just like Sodom and Gomorrah. Um, you're trying to get close to it, but that ain't it. That's good, but that ain't it. What you got? Shalom, Deacon. Uh, he's saying basically uh, if, uh, if he uh, didn't leave his remnant, that we would have all been gay. We would have all been gay. That's what it's saying. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it's saying. Yeah, yeah he went right there. Brothers are looking at him. Not, not, look, 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 look at him now. Look, look at him now. They're like, what the hell? And they're looking at him like, no, not me. Huh? Say something, man. <laughs> what, 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 what you say? Someone still... Some, so, hey, tell them, tell them, tell them, tell them. Tell them, tell them what you just said, man. Some they, of y'all brothers still got skinny jeans. What the hell are you wearing skinny jeans for? You know your stuff can't breathe. <laughs> skinny jeans. The hell is this? 
<laughs> Brothers are uncomfortable. They say, man, I'm glad when this class is over. I don't like this stuff. <laughs> Read it again, Isaiah. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 9. Because they, they, they doubt it. What it, they don't think that it means just that. Watch. Read. Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant. Go ahead. We should have been as Sodom, and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. So they're doubting that that's what that means. Give me Revelation 11 and 8. You're already seeing it on your TV. You're seeing it in your schools. I'm not lying. Check out the curriculum that's coming down the pike. My two dads. They put that out there years ago. Well, they got another one. I thought of another one last night that I forgot about. They got one called Two and a Half Men. Y'all ever heard of that one? What the hell is that? They're trying to make that normal business. And after a while, you're going to think it's normal. You're saying no, no, no. If you, listen to me, watch this here. Go to Leviticus 22. Watch, watch this, 22 and 5. Watch this. Then, and don't let, don't let me, uh, we're going back to Revelation 2. Give me 22 and 5. Watch this. Watch this. I'm going to crack your heads today. You ain't going to leave out of here thinking that I'm crazy. Read 22 and 5. It's the book of Leviticus, chapter 22, verse 5. I, I would never go for that. Watch. Read. Or whosoever touches. Nope, 22 and 5. Deuteronomy, what did I say? What did I say? Did I say the wrong thing? Deuteronomy 22 and 5. That's what I want. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Who is a disbeliever to say that we would not be as what the scripture said if the Lord didn't have a small remnant left that we would not turn into Sodom and Gomorrah mentally? Who says, who thinks that that's not what it's talking about? Stand up. Proclaim, proclaim your dignity. <laughs> Stand up for what you believe in. Where you at? <laughs> now nobody want to say nothing. Because they know they got some skinny jeans at home. Is that it? Is that what it is, Josh and Oliver? <laughs> they got some skinny jeans? <laughs> nobody want to say nothing. <laughs> shall, I, shall I pick somebody that got a spiritual hand up? Who got a spiritual hand up? Pick somebody that you see that got their spiritual hands up. Who got a spiritual hand Brother up? Brother Carmel. That's right. Go, man. We saw your hand up. <laughs> Give it to him. <laughs> shalom, shalom, Deacon. Shalom, shalom. So the question is, we just read Isaiah 1 and 9, right? Isaiah 1 and 9 said what? It said, had the Lord not left but a small remnant, we should have been as Sodom and as Gomorrah. There's a lot of doubt in the brothers' minds. Am I correct? There's somebody said, now we won't go there. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, because I can't see it for me. And I know all of y'all are saying the same thing, right? You follow me? Because if you listen you. to me, man, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> I'm with, I'll be, I don't want to use this because I know I'm on live. But I will get, so I got to be cool. I'm not with that business. That's my point. That's not me at all. But the Bible says that if, this, if, that, if that remnant is not here, we're going to be that. You're right. You're right okay, D. he said, well, right, because he already know I'm getting ready to prove my point, right? Yeah, you're right, Because you, you, that's what it's saying. Now, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you that that's exactly what's going down. Yes, sir. <laughs> all right, sit down. <laughs> all praises. Now, <laughs> read. <laughs> the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse 5. Watch this. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. What is that talking about? The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Who can answer that one? All right. Come on. Let's, I'm going to come back to you. I need to see some other hands. Who's some new brothers? Yeah, give me, give me, give me him. Yeah, yeah, give me him, give me him, give me him. Brother with the dashiki on. I got to give me one of those. I like that thing. Yeah, man. Shalom. Shalom. What, what does that mean? What, what it means is women hold, wear hold, hold it up close to you. We with you. We with you. I just want to. No, you, you, you had it too far from you. Yeah, okay. just cope. Yeah. All right. What it's saying is 
Women wear women clothes and men wear men clothes. Okay. Simple as that. that. That's simple. Now tell me, what is women's clothes? Uh, Read it again. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. What pertaineth unto a man that a woman should not wear? You got to be careful. I'm with you now. You got to be careful. Well, there have been some men I've seen out in the street that I don't think they should have had that on, but they had it on. Okay, you said that you've seen some men out in the street that sh that had it on, but they should not be wearing it on. But we ain't talking about the men yet. We're going to get to the men. Okay. It's, it says the woman should not wear the articles that belong. I'm putting the words in it because I know that maybe the old English. You knew? You knew uh, here? I, okay, yeah, no problem. Yeah, I got you. I got you. Yeah. So I'm going to bring it in today's words. Okay. The woman should not wear the articles of clothing that men wear. What are the articles of men? What are the articles of clothing that men wear that a woman should not wear? Pants. pants. Thank you. Thank you. Thank pants. you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh -huh. You got it. Uh -huh. You got it. Get a, get a brother a hand. Now. It says, the woman should not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, right? Now, skip the man part and read beyond that where it says, all that do so. For all that do so. For, so when a woman wears pants, where my brother at? Where my brother, the brother with the dashiki on? Right. When a woman wears, give him the mic. When the woman wears, so the Lord says that a woman should not wear the articles of clothing that belong to men. We got that part, right? Right. Then when we jump down in the same verse, look at it because I'm going to come back. I'm going to read the whole verse in a minute, but I'm going to follow me for a second. You see the judgment for that? It said, for they that do so. You see that part? That's right. I see it. For they that do so, what? It's abomination unto the Lord. For, for, so for a woman to wear pants. Right. Right. God says that that is an abomination. Right. You follow me? Uh huh. I'm following. Have we accepted that? Yes. <laughs> Give me Leviticus twenty thirteen. Let me show you what else he calls an abomination. We're going back to Deuteronomy twenty five. I mean twenty two and five. Leviticus twenty and thirteen. Read that. It's the book of Leviticus chapter twenty and verse thirteen. Now I want the brother. What's your name? Al, what is it? Alvin. Alvin. Gotcha. Alvin, we're going to read this here now. Read that. We're in Leviticus. Help him get it. You got it? Leviticus, the book of Leviticus, the 20th chapter, verse 13. Read that. Okay, thank you. If a man also okay. lie with mankind. Hold it. I want Alvin to read it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank if, you. Thank if, you over if, here. If okay. a man also lie with mankind as he lies with a woman. Stop. What that mean? No man supposed to be going with a man. That's, that, see that's how clear that is? That's abomination. That's right. wrong. That's t see, see, that's we, see wrong. we ready to jump on that. Yeah. We ready to jump on that. Yeah. You dig it? Because yeah. we ain't got poisoned yet, but they're working on it. Right. They're working on it to say that it ain't an abomination. Now we're just got through talking about it. Black Lives Matter is talking about it. Mm -hmm. And Transgender, all that madness is talking about what you read in there, what the Bible is calling abomination. And Black Lives Matter. I didn't know that was in. Of course, in you didn't know. I that. did not you know did that not was at in all. there. You was Black Lives Matter. I I, I, I understand that. Yeah, cause I got an invitation from the <laughs> sheriff's association. Yeah, the, the sheriff's association asked him for a donation, mm, and mm, then mm. I just put a dollar on them. I sent them a dollar, yeah. and I said down to the bottom, Black Lives Matter. I yeah. put that down there. Yeah. But I didn't know that small print was there. Of course you didn't know that. That's, uh, why they, that's the reason why they made it small. Yes. Yeah, like when you go buy a brand new car, <laughs> yeah. they put all the big stuff up there yeah. and then the small all stuff. All the small print is there. The motor don't that. work. They right. tell you don't do it. The motor don't work. No engine in the car, nothing. That's yeah. what they're telling you. Bumper to bumper. Yeah. Five years of 50,000 mile warrant. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah. So now. <laughs> so. The Bible says, where you at, Alvin? Come back with me. <laughs> read that again. Okay. So right. when it says, read that, read, read that top line again, Leviticus 20, 13. Just stay okay. with me, brothers. All right. If, if a man, 
Start back at the front yep, of it. Yep, okay. start at the front of it again. If a man also lies with mankind as he lies with a woman. Stop. When it says as he lies with a woman, what is that part talking about? Because some are doing it. In, okay, in, so you're going ahead of me. Gamara. Huh? Sodom and Gomorrah. Yes. That's, that's what they were doing. They yeah, wanted it, to have exactly. sex with the angels of the Lord. Right. And, and lock, you're with me. It, I know it, I'm going slow with in, it. You're in right. In the Middle East, when you in a, go to the home of somebody in the Middle East, and you stay at the house, they're supposed to protect you. Yeah. Not not let anything happen to you. That's supposed the, to be. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But, but times have changed since. Times since, has really changed because yeah, we're in the last times. days. Right. Yeah. Right. We're in the last days. But the point that I'm bringing up, I want to, I want to actually break down how the verse is written, what it's saying. It says, if a man also lie down with another man the same way that he will lie down with a woman. That's the point that it's making. Right. When a man lays down with a woman, what are they doing? They're having sex. Right. So if, I know you got it, but I'm yeah. saying it for the sake of those that don't understand it. Oh, right. okay. It's saying that if, if a man lie down with, a man, with another man the same way that that man will lie down with a woman, that means you're trying to turn the man into a woman. The Bible says they have both read it. Read the rest of it. Both of them. No, you read it. You read it, Alvin. Okay. If, if a man also lies with mankind. Two as men he, in the bed. Laying as, down together like they're li what? Live with a woman. The way you would lay down with a woman. Right. Both of them. God have says com that have both committed. of them. Hold it. God says that both of them. Man, boy, love us some. Excuse me, man, boy, lover, regardless of what you call it, God says both of them have committed an abomination. That's right. Now, we all are in agreement with this because we said that's filthy as hell. It is. But God called that an abomination. Did he not? He did. The same way he called women in pants an abomination. Oh, that's right. Women you get that? Right. But same did thing. we accept the woman in pants? Yes. So what the hell you mean that we won't later with all this ad slick rape of the mind with TV ads that they won't have us thinking the same thing here and they pushing it they showing you right now right right and it's slowly it's slowly they're slowly poisoning a, the right, waters it's, it's like a, a yes a, a graph yeah it goes slowly slowly and after that's a couple of years after that's been, exactly what's happening you've been Desensitized. Exactly. That's the exact word. When I was coming up, they couldn't come outside. Right. These homos and all, they couldn't come outside. Oh, they all out there. They, they, they out way there now. The they They're super the out there now. Yeah, they bold now. You dig it? Bold. They bold. Oh, yeah. Bodybuilding and all of that. Yeah. Right. Walking up to you and say, yo, if you even stop me from getting that thing, I'm going to fold you up. That's how they rolling now. Gangster homos. Yeah. That's what they got, bodybuilding homos. Oh. But they don't show you that now. Right, right. But I talked about that in the class last night. Because okay. they want to show the victim side of it, but they don't want to show the aggressive side of it. In the Bible, we read the aggressive side of it. That's what Lot was talking about. Right. Right. You dig it? I, I got it. All right. It. Now y'all all right? Yeah. rest of you brothers, Thank they, you. Look Thank at the, you. you're all right. Thank all you. praises. Thank look at the brothers now. They were like, damn. <laughs> Revelation 11 and 8. It's the book of Revelation, chapter 11, verse 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. The Bible in the book of Revelation is making reference to the Israelites as dead people. Meaning, give me Proverbs 20, what is it? Uh, 21 and, and 16. This is what it's talking about. It's the book of Proverbs, chapter 21. Verse 16. Hold it. I want everybody to get it. You knew, brothers. Proverbs 21, 16. We've got a little bit more time left. Bishop will be on in about a little less than an hour. So we got a little bit, a little ways to go. Y'all all right? Read. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. The Israelites have wandered outside of their normal state. That's what we were talking about earlier. Our people are mad and crazy because they are not in the path that God made them. So the man that wandereth out of the way of the understanding that God made us to be in 
God says that you shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Did y'all hear me? Guess what? That's the reason why they call you Negro. That's what the word Negro really means. Dead. And I done messed them up with that one. Is Negro a Latin word? I don't usually go into these word things, but I'm going to have to start bringing that out. Is the word Negro a Latin word? Right. And they say it means black, right? Which it does. But there's a deeper meaning to Negro. Everything about black, they say, is evil. They say that it's wicked. They say that it's the opposite of life. They said that it is negative. It comes from the word necromancy. Necropolis. Necro. Negro. You dig it? None of the real Africans are classified as Negroes. But the ones that they brought over here on the slave ships, they call them Negroes. No group of Africans, historically, is referred to as Negroes. But they call us Negroes because they said these are the dead people. Give me that in the Apocrypha, the Israelites. And Baruch, I think it is. Hear the prayers of the... Y'all all right? Y'all Okay. So I'm giving y'all all of this so when you deal with your people on, even on the flyer mission, have this in your mind when you're talking to wake your people up. Understand where they are spiritually. It's the, the book of Baruch, chapter 3, verse 4. O Lord Almighty, thou God of Israel, hear now the prayers of the dead Israelites. Hear now the prayer of the dead Israelites. That's us. Y'all all right? Hear the prayer of the dead Israelites. Give me the Bible dictionary. Go a little deeper with this Negro stuff. Watch this. I said a statement earlier. I said that no group of Africans are classified as Negro. I'm going to prove it. Bible dictionary. Look up Ham. Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. Can we put it on the screen? Do we have a screenshot of it so the brothers can see it? Do we or we don't? Can we look it up? They usually, they, they, they did it so many times, you probably can find it. See if you can find it. Because I know so many Israelites have done this over the years. It might be up there now. Images, ham. Images, Bible dictionary images. Let's see what will pop up. Just give, give me a second, brothers. Give me a second. I want y'all to see this. This is what you call hiding information in plain sight. Let me look for it. Y'all want to say something while I look for it? Yeah. Uh, you want to, if you get the opportunity, y'all, go back over that series. That's a good series. You want to go back over that series. It was uh, this week. Uh, the Bible, the book of our fathers. Go back last week. I think it was a three-week running series. So go back. You want to get the first series. The second one that came out, it connects to the found it? that one. And then there was the one last night where Deke them closed out on it. And so that's three weeks of it. And there's a lot of information in there. It's the Alvin was saying that, you know, a lot of stuff he didn't know. You got it? All right, here come D. There it is. This is out of the Zondervan, like the brothers were saying. This is in the dictionaries, the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. This dictionary has been around for years. And when you look up Ham, which was one of Noah's descendants, I guess you got it right here. You're holding something. You got it with you? So you actually have it right there. So you see what we're looking at on the screen. All praises. So when you look up Ham, this is what it tells you about Ham. 
Read it. Ham, the youngest son of Noah. Yeah, let Alvin see that. So, you know, since he's close to you. You see it, Alvin? That's what we're looking at on the screen. Read it. Ham, the youngest son of Noah, born probably about 96 years before the flood and one of eight persons to live through the flood. He became the progenitor of the dark races. So if the word Negro truly meant dark, according to the scholars, he would say he became the father of all the Negro races. Would he not say that? But notice he didn't do that because the scholars know the real meaning of Negroes. Y'all all right? He became what? He became the progenitor. The word progenitor means the father. Ham became the father of the dark races. The reason why they're saying dark races is because the dark races that Ham fathered are the races that you call Africans. But they were no darker than the other sons that Noah had, so you can understand. Noah not only had Ham, he also had Shem and he had Japheth. Y'all hear me? All of the sons of Noah was dark, including Noah himself. As a matter of fact, all of the people were dark until the time when Esau came out. When Esau came out, that's the reason why his color was mentioned, because he's different. That means everybody else was brown. Y'all dig it? So they, not, they didn't call us Negroes because we were different in color. Everybody was the same color. Adam was the same color. Adam was made out of the ground. That's what his name means, Adama, of the ground. That's what the name means. So Adam was dark like the ground. That means all of the people that came from Adam was dark like the ground. Isaac and Rebekah was dark like the ground. Noah was dark like the ground. Arphaxad was dark like the ground. Abraham, Noah, Nahor, Peleg, Joktan, all of those were dark people of the ground. So when you're reading about Ham having his sons, it said that he became the father of the dark races. So the dark races that they're making reference to is the Africans. Read it again. He became? He became the progenitor of the dark races, not the Negroes. Why did the scholars separate the Negroes from the other dark races. He knows who he has in captivity. That's what that's telling you. He knows that the Negroes are not the same as the dark races that are in Africa. He's telling you that in plain sight. In order for you to say that Ham was the father of these four dark races, but he was not the father of the Negro, that means they must know whose father the Negro came from. In order for them to say that he did not come out of Ham, they have to know where you came from in order to say that he didn't come from Ham. They know that you're Shemitic. They know that you're the children of Israel. They know that. That's the reason why they're fighting to keep you from waking up that you're the Israelites. That's the reason why they're labeling your brothers that's teaching the Bible. They say they're a hate group because they hope that you would be dumb enough to say, you know what? Yeah, they're a hate group and walk away from your own salvation and get caught up in that lesbian homo business. You dig it? That's what this is talking about. Read the whole thing. Ham, the youngest son of Noah, born probably about 96 years before the flood, and one of eight persons to live through the flood. He became the progenitor of the dark races. Ham became the father of the dark races. It's going to name who the dark races are. Not the Negro. But he was not the father of the Negroes. But, but, the, but, but he was the father of who? The Egyptians. Of the Egyptians. Are not the Egyptians dark? Read. Ethiopian. You know you can't lie about them. Aren't the Ethiopians dark? But they don't call the Ethiopians Negroes, do they? They don't call the Egyptians Negroes, do they? What's the next group? Libyans. They don't call the Libyans Negroes, but they're dark too because Ham is their father. That's what they're saying. Go ahead. And Canaanites. You know damn well the Canaanites are dark, but they don't call them Negroes either. So they separated us from 
the, from the dark races. And they said, no, this is a different group here. And we're going to call them the dead Israelites. We're going to call them the dead. That's why they put the name Negro on us. You all right, Alvin? Some heavy stuff, ain't it? Okay, I understand. I don't want to give you too much of you overload. You got to drive? You got to drive on the way home? <laughs> Go ahead. Give him a microphone. Give him a microphone. <laughs> uh, I'm already a, a Sabbath keeper. I'm Seven Day Adventist. But well, we got to work on that. It, yeah, but it's some, it's some things y'all saying that I don't get Seven Day Adventist that I'm glad I'm here to get the truth. And you should know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Okay, all praise to the Most High. Give the man a hand. Now, when I made mention earlier when I said about our people stagger from religion to religion, Seventh-day Adventists is another one of those. God never told us to be Seventh-day Adventists. Understand what I'm saying? We ought to keep the Sabbath, but the Sabbath is not the only thing you're supposed to keep. You dig what I'm saying? You're the Israelites that the Bible speaks of. You're not only supposed to be keeping the, the, the Sabbath day, you're supposed to be keeping all of the high holy days of the Most High. And you're supposed to be taught that you are an Israelite, not a, not a seven-day Adventist. God didn't make that. That's not in the Bible. You understand what I'm saying? So you're in the right place to get rid of that madness. You understand? Put the mic, give him the mic back. It was about two weeks ago. I was coming down Beltline Friday mm -hmm. evening, and then got these purple guys was on the street, and I said, yeah. I had to hook and pull over there and get out my car and go see what they are talking about. Now it's I amazing said. that you said that. Now, so you went over there to see? Yeah, I was nosy. I wanted to all see what. Of, no, 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 no. <laughs> get a man out. I'm telling you. I'm gonna tell you something. That's a good thing. Yeah. That's a good thing. Yeah. Because I'm gonna tell you something. Like I said earlier, we are people that always say what's happening, yeah. what's going on. Right. You thinking that you were secure in being a sa uh, seven-day Adventist. Uh, yeah. You thinking that you're being secure in being a Muslim or a Baptist, but what? you still had question marks in your head. Right. Going to pull down the picture. Get your picture. Pull. Oh, oh. Yeah. Damn. Right. Damn. Yeah. And, and I came out, I was growing <laughs> up as a little child in my daddy's home. We were Baptists. Right. And from Baptist, I went to Church of Christ. And from Church of Christ, now I'm Seventh-day Adventist. But that's Louis, what we read Louis earlier. Farrakhan helped me to, to come out of Sunday right. and the Sabbath. Because he was talking about the book of Daniel. Right. And he was going about that head, head of gold. Right. And then meet of Persia. Mm -hmm. And then uh, right. Alexander Daniel, the, the second Great. chapter. Right. And right. then Rome. And then it broke up in ten toes. And, right. Uh, All the... I've been learning. And, now, there was no accident that these guys was No, it ain't there. no accident. There's I'm explaining. No I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> yeah. I'm with you. Listen to me now. All I'm right. gonna deal with you. All right. You said that you came in through Farrakhan, right? Well, Which is it, fine. That's fine. I'm I mean, with you. I, I went to the the tenth anniversary. Right. And 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 while, while that was going on, I was in a Daniel Revelation seminar through Seven Day Adventists. Right. And I got Seven Day Adventists was talking about the Book of Daniel. Right. And then. Farrakhan. Came on and was, broke it I, down. That just blow me away. And I was, and I was the out on the, on the mall of the, of the nation's capital. And right. that place was wall to wall. It was I got crowded. It, and I, I, I couldn't I, even I, run around. He said, you heard what he said? We were there. You didn't, yeah, you didn't see the yeah, purple I, then. And, and I just Did you this, see the purple then? Because we were there. Uh, no. I but was that's all right. That's yeah. all right. Go on. But I was just blown away about the book of Daniel. And then Farrakhan, he's saying the same thing. And I was just a couple nights ago, I was listening to Farrakhan again when they kicked him off Facebook. Yeah. They kicked him off Facebook. I think that was a year ago they did right, that. Right, right. I remember that. And, and Farrakhan is trying to tell the black race in America something. And a lot of them don't have them antennas on to, to, to pick up that frequency. Right. He's trying to tell them something. But guess what? Hold on now, brother. Listen to what I'm about to say. Farrakhan himself is lost. Okay. All right. I'm gonna tell you why. I'm gonna okay. tell you why I'm saying that. I'm gonna okay. tell you why I'm saying that. All right. Because the same way that you came in and he broke down Daniel's, right? He did. He did. Before I came into this truth, before I heard about this truth in the '90s, I'm talking about when I joined. I joined 
when I said joined, I was joining my own nation and didn't know it. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Before I got turned on and enlightened, because I was a knucklehead, uh -huh. running around lost, dumb as hell. Right. And, the, and the radio in New York, Farrakhan used to come on the radio. Uh -huh. And I heard him go into Genesis, the 10th chapter. Now, there's Bibles all in my house. My father, one of these doggone Christians and all that garbage. You dig it? Okay. And he went into Genesis, the 10th chapter, and read about the Christmas tree. So I said, what the hell is this? Mm -hmm. Then he said, Christ is black. And then I went and read it. I said, oh, hell. So I was following. <laughs> right, yeah. You dig what I'm saying? Right. But what I'm, my, my, the point that I'm making is that all water, I mean, let me put it a different way. I was searching right. for something to quench my thirst. I was drinking Different things, if you understand what I'm saying. Different I know, philosophies. I know, I, I know what if it's Baptist, if it's Muslim, if it's this, yeah. I'm drinking because my throat is completely dry. Yeah. So as I drank a little bit of Islam, it wet my throat, but it didn't completely quench my thirst. Okay. You follow what I'm saying? Okay. So I kept looking. Right. The question mark stayed there. I said, okay, that sounds good, but who are we? Yeah. I didn't get that answer. He's telling us that we're Muslim. I said, well, you already showed me the Bible. You already mentioned something about the Bible. I don't see Muslim in here. So I said, something's wrong with this doctrine. Mm -hmm. You dig what I'm saying? I said, there's more to this. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? I got you. Christian, same stuff. They, oh, you're the children of the Lord and this and that, and Christians and blah, blah, blah. I said, well, I don't read that in here. I'm reading. And I was smart enough to actually read names in the Bible. I said, well, who is the Gergesites? Who are the parasites? Mm -hmm. I'm actually reading. I said, well, what about these nations in here? Which one of these nations do I come from? Mm -hmm. Nobody had any answers. Right. You understand? Uh -huh. Another philosophy is trying to tell me that I'm Muslim. I don't see Muslim in here, but I see names in here. Yeah. Where am I? Okay. You understand? Okay. Then when the brothers hit me with the slave ships, that's what did it. Well, yeah, that got me upset ever since them two weeks ago. And, I've been in, and I went and read... Deuteronomy 28 from 1 to 68. And I just keep reading it. I got up in the middle of the night last Farrakhan night. Farrakhan knows this, but he can't teach it. Yeah. You dig it? Mm -hmm. He's an Israelite, but he ain't ready to walk this walk yet. That's my brother. We love, we, we love our people. Don't get us wrong. And I was trying to find the bus back then. That was in 05. Right. I called three different uh, mosques until I got to the right one. Yeah, and uh, after I hung up the phone, I said, "Well, they divided just like Baptists. There you go. They, they divided too. because they're not coming out the Bible. That's a good observation you made. Uh, but here's the reason why I wanted to get into this dialogue with you. Okay, you said that you was on your way on what was it, Beltline or something? I was, I was on Beltline going home. I guess that's a bus. What is that, Beltline? Well, it's a, a street. Colony okay. Apartments. That's where they were. They was out okay. They, they was all out praises. They, they was out there evangelizing. Okay, all okay. praises. Now watch what I'm about to say. You were out there. You had already been enlightened, as you think. Mm -hmm. Just like I, like I thought. I'm slowly, slowly. You dig it. it. Slowly. But the question mark still stayed there. Right. So when you saw the brothers, mm -hmm. and then you went to them, mm -hmm. you found out you starting to get answers to those questions. And they gave me a brochure. That, and right. And I've been looking at and then Jesus Christ and All what that. he looked like. All that information. And that, that kind of that matches up with the Bible. Yeah. It, and that's and then when you can find yourself in the Bible, it, yeah. you know that you've made it home. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. This yeah. is not so. Listen, to, listen to the further question I'm about to ask ask you. Before I came into this truth, I continued to have that question mark, even though I was learning a little bit from here, a little bit from there. The question mark stayed there. You understand? Because I was drinking different glasses of juice, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. You understand? I'm speaking metaphorically. I understand what you're saying. I'm drinking different philosophies. But when I came into this, the question mark disappeared. There's nothing that any other group could talk about that's going to make me want to go over there and listen to them. Nothing. Because I drank the pure water, the clean glass of water, where my thirst is quenched. Mm -hmm. I don't have to look no more. Mm -hmm. You dig what I'm saying? That's the difference. That's when you know you found the truth. There's nothing that these other groups can say that I say, you know what, I need to hear that because I'm still unsure. I'm 100% sure. How many different denominations within this? How many denominations? Because 
<clears throat> no, I'm, I'm going to answer it. I'm going to answer it. One. Okay. okay. One. One. That's okay. us. There ain't no denomination per se. We're the nation of Israel. Uh, it's not a den- it's not a den- it's not a de- the only denominator, if you will, is that we're the Israelites. I'm the Let me say it a different way. The denomination is Deuteronomy, the twenty eighth chapter. How about that? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the denomination. Yeah. Uh, one of my my classmates, uh, class of C. A. Johnson, class sixty nine, and one of the sisters in that class that I graduated in sixty nine, she goes to. Uh, She's a Hebrew Israelite, but she lives in Columbia, but she drives to Charlotte mm-hmm. for service every week. Up okay. There. And I wonder, is Do that the her? same? What organization is that? That's up in Charlotte, because that's where she goes. She goes to Charlotte? Uh-huh. What is she, she not, she don't, they, they're not in the purple like y'all are. They, I've seen them on my cell phone, and they... They in the, all the African dress. Uh, oh, it might be there. Charlotte. Okay. And I, I don't know what organization that is. Oh, let, and, let, and, what, and the other organization, too, is those guys that was up in New Jersey that that killed, that killed some people. They didn't, none of the Israelites did that. That's a smear campaign. Oh, okay. But let me okay. say this here. Let me get back to my lesson. Uh, okay. You all right? All right, yeah. Thank but you. I, yes, thank sir. You, you all right. You, get a brother a hand. He said a lot there, kind of wanted them to let it get it out. It's been a while since I've seen y'all, you know, so I wanted to get into some dialogue with you. Um, in reference to different Israelite groups, I guess that's the part that you're making. The, 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 when we repent, we have to, re- the scriptures say that we have to come on one accord. You have different people that are finding out that they're Israelites, but they have not fully come to the completion of keeping God's laws. So you'll have people that have set up groups and call themselves Israelites and know that they're the Israelites, but they have not come to the full understanding of what the Bible is saying. So that's where you will find your differences at. You, you dig what I'm saying? But we, all of the Israelite groups know Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. They know that they're the Israelites. You dig what I'm saying? So hopefully that those brothers can come on the level that they're supposed to be, but that's up to God to do. But now let me get back to my point. You all right? All praises. Now, Go to, like I was saying, the subject, the part that I was on, we was talking about uh, um, Leviticus 20.13, right? Let's read that again. I'm about to wrap it up. We're still doing good. We're still doing good. It's the book of Leviticus, chapter 20, verse 13. Because we were talking about Lot and the possibility that we could all become Sodom and Gomorrah, Right? Then we go to Revelation 11 and 8. That's where I was going. If a man also lie with mankind as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. So there was no sacrifice. You with me, Alvin? There was no sacrifice that we could have sacrificed unto the Lord to forgive us of that sin if we was involved in it. Your own blood had to be spilled. Before... Before, if you committed a sin and it didn't require your own blood to be spilled, you had to spill the blood of a bullock, like we was reading earlier. You had to spill the uh, blood of a lamb and bullocks and and, uh, what was the other animal that it mentioned? And rams. You had to spill the blood of those for certain sins. You with me, Alvin? But in the case of sodomy, there was no animal that you could bring forth to sacrifice as an atonement for that sin that you committed. So guess what? Your own blood, you with me, Alvin? Your own blood had to be spilled, meaning you was put to death. That's what that means, okay? In the New Testament, we can be forgiven of that through Christ. You with me so far? So now, the dead Israelites, we was talking about the Negro being called dead. We read out of the, we saw that up there on the screen, um... And we read in Proverbs 21, give me that again, Proverbs 21, I mean, 21, 16, help the brother Al Alvin real quick, Proverbs 21 and 16. The book of Proverbs, chapter 21, verse 16, the man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. In other words, he shall remain a Negro. You understand that? So now let's see what. That's actually talking about. Wait, that's, that's, that's referring to all the 
blacks in America who go to church on Sunday. Yes, yes, definitely. All of the 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 Muslim that's talking about them too. It's talking about all, it's talking about Farrakhan himself. It's talking about all of them. Because if you're not keeping God's commandments, that's what it just said. He that wandereth out of the way of God's understanding, which are his commandments, they shall remain in the congregation of the dead. They shall remain being Negroes. You got that? And this week I'll be thinking about what, what That's good. I'll be feeding off of it. Good, good, good. Give me Revelation 11 and 8. It's the book of Revelation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Yes. I'll give me uh, Isaiah 30 and uh, verse 20. This is going to help you out to understand that, hey, you know, this was no accident that you ran across the brothers out there on the street. 30 verse 8. I mean, I mean 30 and 20. It's the Got book. That? Go ahead and read. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 30, verse 20. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore. So the Most High said, your teachers aren't going to be hid in the corner no more. The bread of adversity. Explain that. And that bread of adversity. You know, the things that we've been facing in this life through slavery. You know, not having the word of God. You know, the affliction that we're facing every day, the poverty we're facing every day. He said, you ain't going to have that no more. He's going to show you the way. Right. There's a little bit more in there. I'm going to let you get it back. Mm -hmm. Adversity goes even deeper than that. What does adversity mean? What, does, what is the root word of adversity? Adverse. adverse. What does adverse mean? This, this is this, this. What does, no, this, what does adverse, think about adverse. What does adverse mean? Put it up there. I, I be I be thinking. That, I mean, you close, day in and day out, this 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 mm. bad. It just it's not like it don't ever get better. Okay, watch this. <laughs> That's the answer right there. Opposed to one's interests. Okay. All, right. All of what you're saying is proper, but it's deeper. The root word to adversity is to be adverse. Adverse means to be opposite of what you was made to be. If you get medicine, they put it up there. If you get our prescribed medicine yes. for a headache, right, right. the adverse reaction is all of a sudden your foot, one foot grows bigger than the other. Yes. That's an adverse reaction. It is. Meaning that it's doing something different from what it's supposed to do. Yes, yes. Harmful. Yes. You dig it? I got you. So adverse means to be different from what God made. So in the scripture that, that the officer was reading, he said, although the Lord give you the bread of adversity, meaning that the, the bread of adversity, and then it says, and the waters of affliction, meaning that all of the things, like you were bringing out, the troubles and the rest of it, but all of these things are different from where you're supposed to be. The bread of adversity means that you are, uh, you are operating outside of what is proper. You are adverse to proper action. Right, right. That's what it's saying. Right. So the adverse actions is what you say in day Adventist is adverse to God. Is. Muslim is adverse to God. Being a Baptist is adverse to God. And the Lord gave us that because we broke his laws. Mm -hmm. You're digging it. Okay, read on. And the bread of adversity. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity. Go ahead. And you, the you on, yeah, Charlotte. Go ahead, read it. And the water of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore. Mm -hmm. So but guess what? Now you see your teachers. You're out there on these streets. You see your teachers out there in the communities, on the highways and byways, where the Most High commanded us to be. So that's why you saw them. You see, when you say, hey, let me go see what these brothers are about, you saw your teachers. Read. But thine eyes shall see thy teachers. Uh-huh. And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, this is the way. It's going to be saying what? This is the way. We're going to show you the way back to the Most High God. Read. Walk ye in it. Uh-huh. When you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left. We're going to show you the proper way to walk. And to make sure that, hey, you know the right way. Uh, these teachers are going to be teaching. They're going to teach you. You found it. Thing. You know where he's at? 
He's in Isaiah, because I see you looking around. You found it? Read verse 21 again. The book of Isaiah, chapter 30, verse 21. And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, this is the way. This is the what? This is the way. We're going to show you the way to get back to the kingdom. The way to get back into righteousness. To get back in favor of the Most High God. Read. Walk ye in it. We're going to tell our people, walk you in it. Read. When ye turn to the right hand, uh -huh. or when ye turn to the left. Hey, give me Malachi 2 and 7. Let's see what our teacher is going to teach. Malachi chapter 2, verse 7. It's the book of Malachi chapter 2, verse 7. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. So those teachers should keep knowledge. The Bible is going to tell you what type of knowledge we're supposed to be keeping. Read. And they should seek the law at his mouth. They should seek the what? The law at his mouth. That's what our people should be seeking, the laws of the Most High God. Read. For he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. He's the what? The messenger of the Lord of hosts. So the messengers of God are going to teach you the laws of God. And that's why you know you're in the right place. We're going to teach you the laws of God so you can walk in righteousness. Exactly. Give me one more scripture. Jeremiah 3.15. Is it, is it Jeremiah or Isaiah? Jeremiah, Jeremiah 3.15. It's for you, Alvin. Then we're going to continue on with the lesson. <laughs> it's the book of Jeremiah, chapter 3, verse 15. You got it, Alvin? Jeremiah, the third chapter, verse 15. Read. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge. That's the difference. What is the knowledge? The brother just read it. The laws, uh, Malachi 2 and 7, that they shall seek the law. He said, for the priest's lips, look at me, Alvin. The priest's lips should keep knowledge. And they, the people, shall seek the law at the preacher's mouth. So that's what the preachers are supposed to be telling you about God's law. Because that's how we got into this mess in the first place by breaking it. Read it again. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. You see that? That's what the preacher's job is supposed to be doing. So that's why you're being welcomed home now. And now you're getting that clean glass of water to properly quench your thirst. Of course, that's all right. Moses was 80 when he repented. So you all right? You good? Okay, that's just, that, that, that calms that down. Now let's get to my scripture. <laughs> Okay, give the Lord a hand. So we read out of, uh, out of uh, Proverbs uh, 21, 16, he that wandereth out of the way of God's knowledge and his understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. So now let's go to Revelation. I ain't forgot the Sodom thing yet. I'm going back to that now. Because we should have all been at Sodom. And that's what we're about to read. It's the book. <laughs> Of Revelation chapter 11 verse 8 and their dead bodies you got it Alvin Thank you for waiting. oh yes uh, well, what else are we going to do huh what, what Bush say no, nobody gets left behind <laughs> but we ain't Bush we're the Israelites we're your brothers <laughs> you got it let's read it's the book of Revelation chapter 11 verse 8 and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt so you see that's talking about the great city Babylon the great that's what the revelation is talking about there you see that it says, and the, sp and the dead bodies of the Israelites. So is it talking about a physical death? Spiritual death, that's what it's saying. But look at where the Lord said that these bodies are going to be at. Read it again. And their dead bodies shall... And the mentally dead. You with me, Alvin? And the mentally, the dead Israelites, like we read all over this Bible. The book of Isaiah, chapter 1 and 3, says the ox... Knows who his owner is. And a jackass knows where his land is at. But the Israelites do not know either of these things. Neither do they consider to know. 
That's Isaiah 1 and 3. I paraphrased it. You understand? That's what it means. So our people are in a dead state. Here we are reading about that in Revelation. It says, and their mentally dead bodies, meaning dead in their brains, Negroes, so you can understand, shall lie in the streets of the what? Of the great city. What is the greatest city on the planet? America. The Most High calls the whole Babylon the great, a great city. When you was talking about, you went, huh? America. America, yes. Babylon the great is America. That's what it's talking about. When you was talking about Daniel, Daniel, the book of Daniel starts with Babylon. Then it went into uh, uh, Persia and Media. Right. Medo-Persia. Then it went into Greece. Then it went into Rome. Listen to me now. When Rome was in rulership, Rome was overthrown by black Jews. We were ruling the Dark Ages. I didn't know that. Of course you didn't know that because they don't teach that. But that's in the history books. You're dealing with the group that know, that know that know the history. Black Jews. We were the, the Moors. Let me just let me, let me make it easy for you. You ever heard about the Moors of Spain? Yeah. Seven Eleven A.D. Yeah. The word Moor means black. Of course, they don't write that in there. But that's just that's just a segue for you to know that what I'm talking about ain't BS. You dig it? So the Israelites ruled Europe for over a thousand years. From 193 A.D. when Septimius Severus overthrew Rome, overthrew the Roman Empire, the black Jew gladiators. The gladiators that people have been watching on TV was us. They lied, they lied about a whole lot of history. When you watch gladiators, that's the reason why they have black people playing in the movie. Like I said, they hide facts in plain sight. They had black people playing as the gladiators in that movie with Russell Crowe. You understand what I'm saying? So listen to me, Rome in 193 AD was overthrown by Septimius and the black Jew gladiators. I got books on it. Overthrew Rome in 193 AD and ruled Rome all the way up to 1453 at the battle at Constantinople when the white, so-called white people took it back and they call that the Renaissance. Renaissance means the rebirth. Rebirth of what? Rebirth of what was overthrown. So they got the kingdom back. That's the Rome that came back as America. You understand? So when they got it back in Rome in, in 1492 with the Borgia's family, Rodrigo Borgia, the son of Rodrigo Borgia, Cesare Borgia, is the man that they use as the image of this false Christ that everybody's running around talking about as Jesus. That's the image of a, that's the image of a man. Borgia, that's it, that's the same guy I know it's pronounced differently, Borgia Yes, yes, yes Just listen to me, yes, yes, yes I get it, I get it, hold on now I got you, I got you, but understand what I'm saying So from that point on They took Rome and Spain back At that time Then they began to get different parts of Europe Back all the way up until the 1800s We were still ruling in parts of Europe all the way up into the 1800s, some of us were still ruling in Europe when some of us were being sold over here in slavery. People that was coming out of Spain and Portugal was us. So they lied about a lot of history. You understand what I'm saying? So now that we're over here, I'm bringing you, I just had to mention all of that. Okay, so now we're here, now we're reading about us now. Read that again in Revelation. It's the book of Revelation, chapter 11, verse 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. There's a whole lot been said in that verse. The, the dead Israel, the Israelites, us, the, the 12 tribes of Israel, shall lie in the street of the great city, which is America. And what did the Bible say about this, this great city? It is a spiritual Sodom. And it is also a spiritual Egypt. Why did the Lord say that this great land will have both of those traits in it? Because the same Israelites that was in bondage in Egypt is in bondage in America. That's what the slavery was all about. The literal slave ships and the chains was about. And it is also Sodom. This is homosexual utopia right here. This is it. 
This is, this is lesbian heaven. This is it. That's why the Bible says their, spirit, their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city that is a spiritual Sodom and it is a spiritual Egypt because both of those traits are right here and this is the greatest city on the planet. And it says where also our Lord was crucified. Jesus Christ wasn't crucified over here, was he? So why did the Bible say that where also our Lord was crucified? Because they destroyed the truth of the Bible over here. They got our people believing that this Bible is talking about a white Christ and there's not a white description of Christ in none of the Bibles at all. And in fact, Christ is described looking like you. So how is it that the whole planet Earth thinks that that, that, that Charles Manson looking like is Jesus? How did the world, where did that come, where did that come from? That's called some major witchcraft because they never read that in the Bible. But yet you, show, you ask your children, show me Jesus Christ and they'll come up with that garbage. And you say, well, show it to me in the Bible, and none of them could give you, the, give you that description out the Bible. But in fact, you read about Christ looking like you, a black man with woolly hair, with dark skin. All right. All praise to the Most High. So all praise to the Most High. Let me get a couple more scriptures, and we're going to close up. Bishop will be on in a little while. So this is what we're up against, brothers and sisters. And we have to avoid the temptation that caused us to fall out. So as we go through, the, as we watch and well as pray, we watch, we see the prophecies of God coming to pass left and right. That's what's supposed to stabilize you into this Bible and make sure you stay steadfast. And when you deal with your brothers, understand the condition that your people are in. Deal with your people with affection and kindness because they've been lied to. They've been destroyed. They've been hoodwinked. They've been bamboozled, shucked and jived. That's where our people have been. One of my old elders in the old school said that our job as the men of the Lord with this Bible is to take this Bible and make it real to the people. You're not reading a fairy tale. You're not reading Alice in Wonderland. You're reading about the Bible, the book of your fathers. That's what you're reading about. Your daddies are in this book. Your fathers are in this book. Your children are in this book. Your brothers, your sisters, your mothers are in this book. That's what's in this book. That's what our job is, to make the Bible real to you. So it's not just words on the paper. You understand that? All right. Uh, Y'all got something else to say? I'm going to lean back. I know Bishop is about to come on. Uh, let me get one more scripture to, to close it out. Y'all all right? All right. All praise to the Most High. Um... Give me Isaiah 61. No. Give me Luke. Yeah, give me Isaiah 61, then give me Luke 168. This is what we're here to do. The Bible in the last days, and our enemies don't want this truth to come out, to resurrect brothers like Alvin, to resurrect the other brothers and sisters that come into this truth, that you brothers that's doing that fly mission, that great mission that you're on, to bring this truth and this gospel to wake our people up. They don't want that. Read. The book of Isaiah, chapter 61, verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. That's the job of the prophets. That's the job of the men of God. That's the job of your teachers that shall no longer be hid. You understand? Like what he just read out the Bible earlier. That's their job. To bring good tidings unto the brothers and sisters that are bound in lies. That are bound in affliction. Read. To proclaim liberty to the captives. To proclaim liberty to the captives. To the dead Israelites. That's in this hell hole. Come on. And the opening of the prison to them that are bound. And the opening to the prisons that are bound. Seven day Adventist is a prison. Muslim is a prison. Baptist is a prison. A mental prison. God ain't never told you to follow that. That's a prison. But our job is to break up the folly ground of our people and bring them to the laws and it's true for this Bible. That's what our job is. Now, give me Luke 168. And we're going to close it up. Luke 168. We're going to read about the black Messiah, the black Savior, the Savior that the whole world hates. But he's coming back to kick everybody's ass and put Israel in charge. Read. The book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 68. 
Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Let Alvin get that thing. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He's not the God of everybody. He's the God of the nation of Israel because we need a Savior. The hell is this? We're the ones that need a Savior. Talking about some black lives matter. God said the Israelites matter. Read. For he had visited and redeemed his people. For God has visited and redeemed his people. How did he visit and redeem his people? He showed you your book and woke you up and said, listen, I'm redeeming you because I'm showing you that this is your book. He redeemed us by showing us who we are. He showed us that we are the people of the book. Go ahead. And have raised up a horn of salvation. And Christ, the most high, have raised up Christ. As the horn of salvation, horn means the power of salvation. That's Christ. And ain't nobody going to be able to subdue him. Go ahead. For us, in the house of his servant David. Read. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophet. As the Bible spoke about Christ coming to save Israel. All the way from Genesis to Revelation. All throughout the Bible, it's been written that Christ was going to be, that was Christ was going to come on the scene and die for Israel and to save Israel. That's you and me. You're not Negro. You're not African American. You're the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. That's who you are. Read. Which have been since the world began. Which has been since the world began. It's always been written in the Bible that you are the people of God. Read. That we should be saved from our enemies. What, did Christ, what is Christ coming to do? That we should be saved from our enemies. That we should be saved from our enemies. The same enemies that we were sold into, the same enemies that robbed and took advantage of us all these years and all these centuries, the Lord is coming back to save us from all of them. That's what those chariots are about, that they're trying to stop. They ain't stopping nothing. The only thing that's going to stop is their heart. Read. And from the hand of all that hate us. And he's going to redeem us from the hand of all that hate us. And I'm glad that the most are going to do that. And it's a wonderful thing to see the destruction of your enemies. I can't wait for that day either. So that's the reason why I ain't leaving this truth. The hell with everybody that else that do. I ain't going no damn well. How the hell am I going to come through all of this hell and, and brimstone and then die with my enemies? Are you crazy? No, I'm going to stay in this. Stay myself, stay yourselves and wonder. I'm staying steadfast in this here. Y'all all right? All praise to the Mosai. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.